two hours in length in order to give all the candidates the opportunity to address you, members of the Conservative Party, and all Canadians. Having said that, let us now introduce the candidates. Let's introduce the candidates. Mr. Rick Peterson. Mr. Michael Chong. Mr. Aaron O'Toole. Mr. Andrew Shear. Ms. Kelly Leach. Mr. Brad Trost. Mr. Stephen Blaney. Mr. Pierre Lemieux. Mr. Chris Alexander. Mr. Deepak O'Brien. <laughs> Monsieur Maxime Bernier. Mr. Maxime Bernier. <laughs> Miss Lisa Raitt. Mr. Andrew Saxton. And Mr. Daniel Lindsay. Each candidate will be invited to make a 30 second opening statement. Answers to each question will be limited to 50 seconds. As well, each candidate has the opportunity to use one 30-second rebuttal at any point during the debate and will signal their desire to use their 30-second rebuttal by raising a red paddle. Every candidate will be invited to make an opening uh, statement of, that will be 30 seconds in length. The responses will be limited to 50 seconds. In addition, every candidate will have uh, a 30-second uh, possibility of rebuttal at any time and will signal their desire to do so by raising a red paddle. I'll invite Mr. Rick Peterson to start this debate with his opening statement. You have 30 seconds. Merci, Monica, au conservateur et conservatrice Thank ici you, au Monica, au Québec. to the Conservatives here in New Brunswick and Quebec and to all Francophones across the country. I'm listening to you and I understand you. I know that your values are my values, values such as tolerance welcoming, equality, and fiscal responsibility. These are values that built Canada and built our party, and these are the values I will defend as Prime Minister. You can follow me on my website. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I'd like to say that I speak French the way Mr. Chrétien speaks English or the way he spoke English when he began as a member of Parliament. And like Mr. Chrétien, I'm working very, very hard to improve my French and to be able to communicate in both official languages. I build a much bigger Conservative Party that includes Canadians of all races, religions and creeds and Canadians from all regions of the country, including Atlantic Canada. Thank you. Mr. O'Toole. Bonsoir. Mon nom est Good Aaron evening. My name is Aaron O'Toole. I am a member of parliament, a lawyer, a volunteer, and a former veteran. But most importantly, I'm a father, and like you, I want a prosperous future for our children. If we want to win the next election, we need a leader with experience and with good judgment. 
person, et moi. That person is me. La mission. Please join Merci. my mission. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Andrew Shear. Uh, bonjour à et à Good tous. afternoon, everyone. It's a wonderful pleasure to be with you this evening. The most important reason why I'm running in this leadership race is because I can't let Justin Trudeau do to my kids what his father did to my generation, and that's leave us with a legacy of debt and deficits. We need a leader who can articulate a positive vision of conservative, va of conservative values and reach a broader audience. Et je suis fier d'avoir 18 députés to have qui appuient 18 members of parliament who support me. So I'm Merci. asking for your support Thank this you. evening. Ms. Kelly Leach. Liberté, prospérité, Liberty, une identité prosperity and a Canadian identity. I believe that Canada has been founded on its values, equality of opportunity, generosity, tolerance, and hard work. I intend to protect Canadian values. For more information with respect to my positions, please uh, consult my website. Thank you, and I wish you all a great debate. I'm 100% conservative, fiscally speaking and socially speaking, and also in terms of respect for our laws. But I'm also a libertarian with respect to all questions of policy and culture and national defense. I am a conservative, 100% conservative. Thank you. Mr. Stephen Blaney. Good evening. Like you, I don't like uh, liberal uh, bad uh, work. I like uh, clean energy, but I'm also opposed to a carbon tax. I have a plan to create jobs and reduce electricity bills. I want respect for gun owners. I want to pull small businesses first before big companies. I want respect for our Canadian identity, and I want to share those ideas with you tonight. Merci. Thank you. Mr. Pierre Lemieux. Je me présente à la chefferie du Parti conservateur car je crois que I am running for the conservative leadership because I believe that under my leadership we can defeat the Liberals in 2019. I am offering experience and ideas that uh, differentiates me from my colleagues. I'm bilingual and I understand the value of service. I have dedicated my life to service. I entered the armed forces at 17 years of age and I served the armed forces for 20 years before becoming a member of Parliament for 10 years. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chris Alexander. Merci, bonsoir. Thank you and good evening. I was in Edmonton on Saturday and I met uh, there with a number of people. Evan was one of them. He lost his job. He has to make payments on his mortgage. He has to make payments on his car. He has a girlfriend and he intended to found a family with them, but it's not working anymore and he has no prospect of a new job. Our first responsibility in this campaign is uh, to reinvent the labor market here in Canada. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Deepak O'Brien. I am a, a member of the Conservative Party. What do I bring to the table? I bring the voice of experience. I bring the voice of inclusion. I bring the voice of diversity. I bring the voice of older generation. And I bring the new voice of new generation, the voice of new Canadians and the voice of the grassroots. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the package called Deepak O'Brien. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Monsieur Maxime Bernier. Mr. Maxime Bonsoir. Bernier. Uh, Good Maxime evening. Maxime Bernier, member of Maxime Parliament from Bernier. Beauce and proud father of two daughters, Charlotte and Megan. I'm a conservative who believes in individual freedom and personal responsibility. I have proposed a number of bold reforms in the context of this campaign to reduce the size of government, increase competitiveness within the Canadian economy, and bring down taxes for all Canadians. Together, we will be the next government. Thank you. Ms. Lisa Raitt. Party Conservative Gagne the Conservative Party must the win in 2019. About the future of our party. It's about the future of our country. It's about choosing someone who is proposing new ideas that will allow us to beat the Liberals. We need a leader who understands what the real Canada is all about. For those who work hard, my name is Lisa Raitt. My name is and Lisa Raitt. In 2019. Thank you.
Mr. Andrew Saxton. Good evening, everyone. Every day, more and more Canadians are thinking about the future. It's becoming more and more difficult to get through to the end of the month. In the meantime, the government is uh, wasting your money on useless programs. We don't need pie in the sky ideas, we need practical ideas. I'm a businessman, I'm running to offer conservative ideas that work in the real world, the world where I've spent nearly three decades. I'm, therefore, I'm the best person suitable to be leader of our party, and I need your support. Andrew Saxton, Thank you. CA. Merci beaucoup. Mr. Daniel Thank Lindsay. Thank you. There are 14 of us here, and debate is good, but it's important and we, that we must look beyond this leadership debate and recognize that the words that we choose and the tone that we take is how Canadians are going to see the Conservative Party in the next election. A true debate is essential, but of course we have to be cautious, we have to choose the words and the tone to reflect the diversity of Canada. I have a health care plan and we're going to implement it. Thank you. We'll now start with our first question of the evening. Mr. Rick Peterson, you'll answer first and I'll call on candidates individually in order from my right to left according to podium positions. As a reminder, you will have 50 seconds to fully answer. There is a clock behind me and it will give you signals as your time winds down. Due to the amount of candidates we have, the 50 seconds timing will be strict. Nous allons commencer avec la première question we'll begin de la with the first question Mr. for this evening. Mr. Peterson, please answer first, and I will name the candidates from right to left according to the podiums. I remind you that you have 50 seconds to answer. There's a clock behind me, and it will give you a signal when your time has expired. Because of the number of candidates, the 50-second time frame is strictly adhered to. A question from Labrador. How will you be improving our system of justice for uh, offenses committed? Thank you, Bruce. I'm the son of a member of the RCMP. Uh, I, the values are very close to my heart, and I think that it's very important, particularly when we're dealing with justice here in Canada. We must know uh, the fact that there is something very important when judges are giving sentences uh, what we really have to do is uh, there must be uh, a certain amount of stringency to re respect the laws and Canadians must readily understand and have trust in their justice system it has to be fair it has to be just and they have to follow everything just like parliamentarians and MPs do thank you Mr. Michael Chong Merci, uh, Bruce, pour la Thank you, Bruce, Je for the question. On a de I think that we de need a justice a, system. Uh, that has to rehabilitate prisoners. Je pense que très I think it's very important uh, system for us to have a system where notre prisoners should be reintegrated into society um, as productive citizens. I have uh, very much supported many of the measures that uh, the former Premier, uh, Prime Minister Harper brought about for the Conservative government, but I think we must change something and we must implement uh, measures for rehabilitation programs Merci. as well. Merci Bruce. Nous devons Thank you, avoir Bruce. Système de justice we really have to have a justice system that protects si victims of crime. If someone commits a violent crime sexuelle, or sexual assault, ou elle that individual de la prison. should be incarcerated. Already the Liberal government is forgetting the victims of crime and they oppose mandatory minimum sentences for violent crimes. Today is a day we remember and take action uh, against violence against women. And today, as Conservatives, we should recommit to making sure that protection of the public and respect for our victims of the criminal justice system are the centerpiece of our justice program. As leader, I will ensure that victims are heard and the, pr the protection of the society is a priority. Thank you. Merci. Monsieur Andrew Scheer. Thank you, Mr. Scheer. That's an excellent question. As a father, I'm very much concerned for my children. I want them to be able to live in a country that protects 
honest citizens. Seulement deux semaines, il y a deux, seulement deux semaines, a mere two weeks ago, when the Prime Minister stated that he has uh, more confidence in a judge that has a minimum sentence for a sexual offender, I have more confidence and support for the victims of those crimes, not for the criminals themselves. Ms. Kelly Leach. Today, we join uh, all those we commemorating all a sad event. Victims of the Polytechnic today. I care about the safety of the average Canadian. My policy of legalizing mason pepper spray for self-defense for all Canadians is particularly targeted towards women in this country. In our country, far too many women are victims of sexual assault. As a prime minister, I'm going to change the laws so that they qualifying and clarifying feel that the law they well the use of mace and pepper spray for self-defense will give women a real opportunity, a measure of protection about against would-be protectors. I haven't heard from the other candidates on this podium whether they oppose or they support this policy. I will do this Thank when you, I'm Prime Ms. Minister Ms. of Canada. Monsieur Brad Trost. Firstly, I said that I'm very proud of the previous Conservative government and the, the, the issue of justice. We need to be very proud of our justice record. Uh, what we did, we did right, and we need to continue to support and enforce the legislation that we passed before. And whatever the Liberals and the courts strike down, we need to bring it back, including using the notwithstanding clause to bring back some of the legislation that we previously passed. The deuxième chose, je pense pour une politique justice différente. Le gouvernement I, I doit, think of a different uh, justice policy, and in that regard, the government must spend more money to build um, uh, prisons. Justice is very important yes, for the government of Canada. Blaine. Bruce, we did a lot with Stephen Harper. We put victims first. I tabled the Victims' Bill of Rights with Peter McKay. But we need to do more. We stopped the revolving door, but the Supreme Court struck down this, this, this process. On doit utiliser la clause non obstant. We must use the notwithstanding clause. The Prime Minister's father said that there must be a balance between Parliament and the Supreme Court. We parliamentarians must take up our responsibilities. It's a provision that we can implement. It would be good for five years, and it's my intention of doing so to see to it that we put an end of these so-called sentences of two for one and that decisions taken by Parliament are applied. Monsieur Pierre Lemieux. The system de justice is created in our Canadian society. It is important to have a fair system that protects Canadians from the law. It is important to have a fair system that protects Canadians who respect the law. One of the concerns of Canadians is that they might become the victim of a crime. As a father of five children, four of them daughters, I have the same concerns. So therefore, we must have a government that will better protect Canadians. As a Conservative MP who served for ten years under Stephen. Stephen Harper, I am very proud of the actions that we took as a Conservative government to better protect Canadians against crime. Thank you. Merci. Monsieur Chris Alexander. Un pays de justice. A country of justice, a country with safe communities, requires a leader a prime minister that is serious in this regard, that takes the responsibility seriously, and we don't have this at the moment. Ça nous prend we un need a conservative 2019 government as of 2019 on to bring back minimum sentences for violent, crimes committed, sexual, violent crimes, sexual oui, crimes. Yes, for uh, uh, dealing with rehabilitation, crime prevention, la, and also put the focus victims. on victims. We have to go beyond all that. We have to enhance the uh, rules of our country for immigration, for all our government droit, programs. That's a state of justice, and that's what justice is all about. Thank you. I would like to talk about our children. My grandson is in the crowd. You know. We must protect our children. I stated in 2015 uh, about when I dealt with Canadian pedophiles. Poor Suvi or Canada. Ilia Encore is. Sexual doesn't fall. 
There are sexual assaults in this country. This must stop. We must have a justice system to deal with these issues. Thank you. Monsieur Maxime Bernier. Merci. Notre système de Thank justice you. Our justice system must be a fair system, and even more so, it must protect the public at large victimes. and help victims. I think that's most important. I'm very proud as a member of Parliament and a member of the Conservative Party of Canada of having worked with Mr. Harper on this issue, that we have a clear defined system, that, that the offenders of odious crimes have serious sentences. And to my mind, the role of uh, government, the the most important role is to ensure that Canadians who want to live here in Canada live in, in safety. So let's not shy away from bringing before Parliament legislation that will enable us uh, to have severe sentences for odious crimes, and uh, the Supreme Court seems not to have recognized this, and we, we have to deal with it in our legislation. Thank you for this question, uh, I think it's very important. Canadians want a government that will enable us to live in safety, but I do know that there are many problems. We have to speak more candidly about Aussi, mental health. I think it's really important that we speak about the family justice issues that we have in this country. The family law courts are clogged up. There are real people out there who are feeling real pain as a result of a family background as a family breakup or as a result of family issues that they feel the need that has to go to the court. We have to do better in this country. We can't have families be torn apart by what's happening within our justice system. And we are the ones that can fix this. Thank you. Mr. Andrew Saxon. Merci. Thank you. The protection of our citizens should be a priority for all governments, and the Liberals seem to have forgotten this. The Prime Minister himself has just stated that he was on the judge's side and not on that of the victims. Uh, there should be minimum sentences. It can't be difficult when children have been assaulted and their future jeopardized. But Liberals, instead of protecting children, are protecting judges. I mean, this is ridiculous. Let's put the rights of victims before the rights of criminals. Thank you. Mr. Daniel Lindsay. We have to hear the victims. We have to have a system. We have to have a system. We have to have a system of restoration for the victims. To take care of victims, we must have a system that knows that there are people who have committed odious acts. We have to have a sentence that is as odious as the crime that was committed. But we also know and must know that our society works if we have trust in doctors, engineers, and judges. And we have to respect judges' uh, decisions. It is essential that society functions with confidence. And we have to have our criminal system respectful of the victims, but recognize the experience of the thank, judges. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question will begin a section of theme questions. This question touches on the theme of employment, infrastructure, and labor. Energy East is a major infrastructure project that would bring tens of thousands of jobs to Canada, provide an economic boost to our GDP, and increase tax revenues. In fact, in New Brunswick, Energy East would be estimated as providing three quarters of a billion dollars in new tax revenues and thousands of new jobs. As opposi opposition leader, what would you do to have Energy East built? Mr. Michael Chong. Well, thank you for the question. I think we have to do two things. I think the Conservative Party needs to have a credible position to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And I think we need to have a process, a regulatory approval process through the National Energy Board that consults with communities along the routes, that consults with Aboriginal communities along the routes, that takes into account environmental concerns, but that ultimately results in the timely approval of east-west pipelines, such as those like Energy East, which would terminate in St. John's. St. John. So uh, I actually was visiting the terminus in St. John about uh, two months ago to understand exactly the economic impacts it would have on the region. It's projects like this that the government needs to ensure 
uh, go forward uh, to create jobs in Atlantic Canada and throughout the country. Thank you. Mr. Rick Peterson. Thanks, Monica. The, uh, uh, coming from northern Alberta, coming from Grand Prairie, my friends are involved in this business, and I can tell you there is no greater need, there is no greater desire, then there's no greater uh, reason that Canadians want this thing built. But I'm going to tell you something that I would do as leader of the opposition. I would be tabling and outlining right now my economic program, which I will table as Prime Minister in 2020, and that's the total elimination of corporate income tax. If you want to stimulate the Atlantic economy, take the corporate income tax to zero. There would be a 10% growth in GDP in our economy that would be $200 billion. What would that do? That's the equivalent of doubling this Atlantic Canada economy every year. We have to push hard, support our resource sector, but at the same time, as leader of the opposition, I will be tabling, outlining, and detailing my plan for zero corporate income tax in Canada, the greatest reform this country has ever seen. Thank you. Mr. Daniel Lindsay. The process of moving products across the country needs to be predictable. We cannot have a situation where people cannot bring in outside uh, uh, capital in order to support the programs. Can you imagine being in a situation where you don't know if you can actually get a pipeline built? These pipelines bring real money. The ability for us to move people and product across the country is absolutely essential. As Prime Minister, there is no question that I will work to reduce the regulation and the inability for us to participate in every single sector of our society. When we look at the amount of money that we don't, or that we leave on the table at the present time, it is like turning off the lights in every single hospital in this country. Thank you. Mr. A Andrew Saxon. Thank you. There are regions in this country where people have to pack up and leave, leave their families behind to find work. It's time that we reunite these families, that we bring those young Canadians back home, which means that we have to create jobs in every part of our country, in every region. And I know that's an important issue here in the Maritimes. The Energy East project will create thousands of jobs, not just during construction, but afterwards as well, for our ports and for people who live in that port region. I think it's extremely important that we get Energy East built, that we create jobs here in the Maritimes so that young Maritimers can come home and work where they were born. Thank you. Ms. Lisa Wright. Last 20 years of my life has been about building infrastructure in places where I was told that infrastructure could not be built. And this is extremely important to make sure that we get things done. The construction of the Energy East, the construction of the Energy East pipeline should already have Quite begun. Frankly, Trudeau is putting divisive regional politics ahead of putting Canadians to work. And I will put down a marker on this. I would get this done. I would ask one question. L'Energy East, the Energy East pipeline de la ville will de Jean decrease pourquoi, pour the cost of living for people in the Atlantic region. Why shouldn't people in that region have uh, jobs created Why by such a project? Why is it that people in Atlantic Canada don't deserve more hope? Thank you. Monsieur Maxime Bernier. Merci. Thank you very much. We all know that uh, pipelines are safer for the environment, but also safer for Canadians. Um, coming from Quebec, and as you know, we had a big tragedy in Lac Mégantic, and we all know that we need more pipelines in this country for economic, to build our economy also, but also for our environment. Uh, I think it's a shame what the Trudeau government is doing right now, so waiting to approve these kind of projects, because as you know, as you just said, it will be a $15 billion investment in our economy. So I believe in private sector investment. I don't believe in government spending. So the Trudeau government tried to spend a lot of money, as you know, $30 billion to create wealth and job in this country, but that's not happening. That's not happening and that won't happening because it is a sedative for the economy. It is not a stimulus for the economy. Thank you. Mr. Deepak O'Brien. Under the Trudeau government, we have seen a shocking lack of leadership. This is a government that does not put Canada first. Prime example, Energy East. This is a project that generates jobs, lots of jobs, to both the West and right here in the Maritimes. It's a project that benefits all Canadians, but are the Liberals pushing to get this done? No. Example two, NAFTA. At the first indication that NAFTA was under threat, what does Trudeau do? He says he will renegotiate. 
Is that the leadership we want? No. Under my leadership, ladies and gentlemen, Canada comes first. Real leadership for Canadians. Jobs is the top priority. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Alexander. As leader of the opposition, I would talk about this issue and this project every day. I would remind Canadians and the government, the sitting government, that we are still not building new pipelines in Canada, even with last week's decisions. These are existing routes, Line 3 in Kinder Morgan, and new routes would represent Northern Gateway, Keystone, Energy East, and Energy East is the biggest. And I would remind Canadians in all communities that their communities are at risk, like Lake Megantic, like the sites of other accidents across this country, and that we in Canada build pipelines better than any country in the world, that we can build them safely while protecting our environment, while consulting all of those communities along the way, including Indigenous communities, and that it is scandalous for this country to be importing nearly a million barrels of oil a year while we continue to export. Thank you. Monsieur Lemieux. Pipelines are good for our Canadian economy. They create jobs. They move energy safely across Canada. They allow Canadians to use our own Canadian energy, and they facilitate our exports. As leader, I would be strongly encouraging the government to endorse this type of process, which is based on facts, that's based on science, and that's based on sound uh, policies and sound practice. The problem with the Liberal government right now is they're basing their decision on politics, and that delivers no certainty to Canadians, and it delivers no certainty to those who want to initiate a pipeline project and those who want to invest in Canada and in the good of pipeline projects. Leadership is required on this file, and I would show that leadership on your behalf and on behalf of Canadians. Thank you. Mr. Blaney. As leader of the official opposition, it's clear I would ask Justin Trudeau who, to remove uh, the people who are now involved in the technical assessment uh, process. Now, this kind of project can create thousands of jobs in New Brunswick, and I would tell him to focus on the problems at the border, where the Americans are sending us their old, uh, their filtered milk, their old hens, and uh, so what I would say that to the Prime Minister is to respect our borders and to continue to create jobs as we did by uh, bringing in the uh, Irving project in the east. We need uh, to politicians to stop getting involved in technical assessments. What they need to do is uh, to ensure that there are jobs, and that's what we'll do after May 27th. The, premier responsibility, the, chef the first the responsibility of the leader of the opposition and of any conservative economy. MP is to support the economy. Not, uh Le, uh, Energy East, bien Energy for East is Quebec, uh, a good uh, thing Canada, for workers in Quebec, New Brunswick, and, and Western Canada. The economy, we need to be clear about it. The economy first. The Liberals do not care about the economy. They have a dozen different other priorities, and they don't put jobs first. So as leader of the opposition, I will be very clear. Jobs come first. Energy East is good for all of Canada, and we will fight for it, and we will make noise until it gets built. Thank you. Ms. Leach. Today I announced that as Prime Minister I will support the construction of the Energy East pipeline. I began that advocation for your pipeline today. This is a piece of critical infrastructure to support middle class Canadians here in New Brunswick and right across the country. The pipeline will make it possible to create jobs, to reduce our dependency on foreign oil, and to versify our exports. I also that violence and vandalism that stop natural resource development is completely unacceptable. Canadians want common sense policies. They want to be prosperous, and I'm going to deliver on that. Thank you. Mr. Scheer. You know, it seems like every time there's a Trudeau in 24 Sussex, we get another version of a national energy program. Only every time the Liberals bring in a national energy program, there's less energy being developed and exported and less people working in those sectors. You know, all of us on stage support pipelines, not just because of 
the, it's the safest way to transport our natural resources, but because of the jobs they create. And we need a leader who can articulate that, who can make sure that Canadians understand that it's not just about uh, you know, uh, uh, natural resource uh, exports, it's not just about data points, it's about the human beings who are out of work right now in Alberta, in Saskatchewan, here in New Brunswick. Justin Trudeau sat on the approvals of Kinder Morgan and, 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 and Line 3, and people were out of work for months needlessly. We need to fight that. Thank you. Mr. O'Toole. On peut construire les oléoducs we can comme build pipelines such as Energy East uh, for jobs and for our economy right here in the Maritimes. Today, we import oil from foreign countries for our refinery here in St. John. Question. We have a world-class refinery in New Brunswick. As Canadians, why would we not refine our own resources at home? That's a question I'll be asking Mr. Trudeau every day in the House of Commons. We need a Prime Minister who doesn't mock the resource industry. We need a Prime Minister that supports it, brings together municipalities, uh, premiers, First Nations leaders to make sure we have jobs here in Atlanta, Canada and support our resource economy in the West. It'll be a priority. Thank you. Dans une économie faible, les in emplois a weak sont economy, importants. jobs are important. Nous voyons que les taux de chômage au Canada restent largement rates in Canada have remained unchanged. 7% of Canadians are currently without a job. Alors que tant de Canadiens sont when, sans travail so et que les entreprises jobs à and businesses trying to fill vacant positions, what would you do to balance the needs of businesses for temporary foreign workers with the need to get Canadians back to work? Mr. O'Toole, Merci. Dit à thank you. I have said a number of times that uh, we are facing an Le employment crisis right now in Canada. The Trudeau, Trudeau government has increased taxes on taxpayers aussi. and for businesses et as well. And right now, he has announced a new carbon. tax on carbon. We already have a jobs crisis in Canada, from east to west and in the north. What is the Liberal answer? runaway spending and deficits, higher taxes for everyone. For immigration, the temporary foreign worker program should be for agricultural and acute shortages. But we should be working with Atlantic provinces to make sure you benefit from immigration and that people coming are filling skills gaps. This is part of the crisis. While Mr. Trudeau spends money abroad, we're losing jobs here at home, including 1,100 in Moncton in this last year. Thank you. Mr. Scheer. That's a very good question because right now there is a job crisis and there are regions with a very high unemployment rate which uh, even now uh, there is use of foreign workers. When Canadians are looking for jobs or need jobs, the government has to place a priority on those individuals and also Talking about a carbon tax right now is ridiculous. It's, it's not to, for the government to find new ways of attacking employers. What we need is a government that lowers taxes for businesses to ensure that jobs can be created. More government, more rules, more constraints and more money to pay for all of that. Taxes on income, taxes on consumption, and now a tax on carbon. We have an increased deficit, debt that's rising. The Liberal government is choking off private sector investment and killing jobs. We need to decrease the size of government. I plan to cap government spending so that we can reduce the size of government and let the private sector flourish. That's a common sense policy to make sure Canadians get back to work. Thank you. Monsieur Brad Trost. First of all, the most important thing for all Conservatives is the economy and lowering taxes. That is the top priority for my government and it's a good idea at all times and in all situations. With respect to temporary workers, 
region avec, uh, or regions le, le, le besoin different. with different needs. I think the federal de government permet le, le region certain must niveau de allow flexibility. the regions to have so a certain amount of flexibility. Cut taxes, give flexibility to the regions, and put immigration and labor policy on a more local level. Ottawa doesn't always know best. It generally doesn't. Thank you. Mr. Blaney. Who creates jobs in Canada? Not government, but our small and medium businesses. It's 70 percent of our jobs. How do we support them? By lowering electricity bills. How do we achieve that? By investing in a Canadian source of energy. Nuclear energy is uh, affordable and reliable. Ontario, For 40 years in Ontario, it has been generating rentable. electricity that uh, is economical. We have to put an, um, an end to these ecological dreams and in invest in nuclear. hydroelectricity. Nuclear is a safe and reliable energy. That's how we're going to reduce bill for, for small and medium businesses. That's also how we are going to reinvest in our Canadian knowledge. Thank you, Mr. I am proud to be an engineer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lemieux. Thank you. An economy rigorous is the meilleur moteur de création A rigorous economy is the best way to create jobs. And as Prime Minister, I intend to lower taxes so that Canadians can keep more money in their pockets. And Canadians will be spending that money within our economy and thereby create to job, uh, uh, contribute to job creation. I also want to lower business taxes. Businesses create jobs and they reinvest their profits in order to expand their business and create jobs in that manner. I want to be clear. I will eliminate the carbon tax being proposed by the Liberals. That tax is costly, useless and ineffective, and it will cause a lot of harm to the Canadian economy without any clear benefits. Thank you. Mr. Alexander. Well, now we know. Why? <laughs> Why there is so much happening uh, in, during this uh, uh, debate. I also am in favor of nuclear energy. But let's speak about jobs. Some two years, two, two years ago, we were the 15th uh, with respect to investment in the oil industry. And now, Alberta is the 43rd in the list. Why? Because of the carbon tax. Let's, uh, and that's a Trudeau tax. And let's put it aside. It's a mistake. It's a mistake many, for many governments in this country. Here in New Brunswick, you have the heaviest tax burden amongst the world, the highest in Canada as well. We have to reduce taxes. We have to uh, stimulate the internal economy. Thank you. We want a strong economy. We want a balanced budget, which equals a strong economy. And reducing taxes means a strong economy. Access to markets, international markets, equals a strong economy. Investments in infrastructure and in education, equal an economic fault. Un economic fault, equal. A strong economy equals jobs. Deepak Obrai equals jobs. Deepak Obrai equals jobs. Monsieur Bernier. Merci. You're right, Deepak. <laughs> <laughs> we need more. We need more Deepak. So I just want to say that prosperity does not come from government spending. We all know that. And what we need to have, it's uh, not what the federal government, the Trudeau government, is doing right now with uh, more spending, more borrowing, and more taxes. We need the exact opposite of that. I have a plan for that. I have a vision for that. I want to add, uh, end corporate welfare. Uh, abolishing the capital gains tax in Canada and also lower the corporate income tax from 15 to 10 percent. So I think that would be the plan that will create wealth and job in this country because that will be a pro-private sector investment. And we all know that it's only the private sector who will create wealth and job in this country. Merci. Ms. Lisa Wright. Merci. Je viens de Cap Breton. And what I can tell you is that as I look down this line, I don't see anybody here but me who had to make the decision when you're 10 years old that you're not going to live where your parents brought you up, because there are no jobs. So I can promise you this. Pour les travailleurs hommes et femmes, 
for nous devons assurer la formation pertinente, offrir des stages et des internats pays et réduire in les barrières commerciales provinciales. Et nous devons assurer que chaque personne, peu importe où vous vivez dans ce pays, a en fait besoin d'avoir une chance de travailler et de vivre et de grandir dans le pays dans lequel vous êtes né. Is that too much an ask? I don't think so. That's why I'm running to be Prime Minister of this country, to give a fair shot to everyone in Atlantic Canada. Thank you. Mr. Saxon. Comme je viens de dire en anglais, il y a des endroits au Canada où on cause des gens qui doivent se déplacer et laisser leur famille pour réunir leurs familles et pour créer des emplois partout au Canada. Le taux de chômage est trop élevé au Canada. Mais en même temps, et 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 en même there are training programs that should be able to help them. And all this has to be done in Canada as well. Thank you for the question. When I look at the question, it is a specific question, but in many respects, c'était au sujet de notre économie. Everything has to do with our economy. economy. And we have to Et have si an economy. Des chômages, and if we speak about unemployment and businesses, businesses should have enough money to hire uh, uh, people. The, the question is really an economic question. And how do we make sure that people actually have the opportunity? How do we ensure that young people actually have the same opportunities that virtually every person in this room has had? And that comes through reducing taxes, it comes from stimulating small, uh, uh, small economies, and it comes from being wise in our infrastructure spending. Thank you. Merci. Monsieur Peterson. Merci, Monica. Je suis uh, ravi qu'il y ait soit une question sur les investissements dans le secteur privé, parce que je so suis le seul. So that I can answer from the ici, private sector, because I'm the only privé. one here amongst all of us. Avec les chefs d'entreprise, je travaille I work with avec business les leaders, leaders ce with peur? capital investments. Le and you know what's concerned? Of a, on January 20th, there will be a new president sworn in. What are they going to do? They're going to be reducing uh, corporate taxes. And how they're going to go about it is at the same level that we could do it here. The whole problem of temporary work is that there's not enough jobs, not enough jobs here in Canada. So what do we have to do, ladies and gentlemen? That's my plan. We want to eliminate uh, this. We want to stimulate investment. We want to create jobs. And government isn't necessarily the answer. Investments is the best income for a society. Thank you so much for the question. To help workers, I'm going to do two things. Firstly, I'm going to double the tax credit for uh, employment income. This is going to help families and low-income families, and it will enable us to create jobs throughout the country. And secondly, I want to help our small and medium business sector. They are the very engine of our economic growth here in this country. But the problem is that businesses don't have enough funding to finance and to increase their businesses. So the central mortgage and housing, I'll call upon them to give the business sector more funding so that they may grow even more. Mr. Bernier, you raised your red paddle, as I understand. Oui, merci. Thank you very much. My colleague Kelly said that we must uh, freeze the federal budget. I think we must cut the federal budget for having more growth in this country. She always said that uh, in the campaign that we must uh, look at our immigration system in Canada. And as you know, we're not like in the US. We don't have the same problem in the US with illegal immigrants. I don't know why, why Mr. Leach is uh, playing a kind of a karaoke version of Donald Trump in Canada. It is not the same thing. We, uh, I think we are opening to immigration, and we don't need this karaoke version of Donald Trump. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Brad Trost, 30 seconds, right of rebuttal. My colleague Lisa Raitt said no one else up here had the choice of whether they had to leave their province to get work. Well, I grew up in Saskatchewan, and in Saskatchewan for many years, hundreds of thousands of young people moved to Alberta. We solved the problem. We got rid of the NDP government. We cut our taxes. When Alberta raised their royalty rates, we cut ours. We brought in investment. Conservative policies work. 
They worked in Western Canada. They work in Eastern Canada. They'll work here in Atlantic Canada. We should be proud of our record as Conservatives. Thank you. Mr. Andrew Saxon. Thank you. I wasn't sure I'd get the opportunity to use this, so I wanted to use it right now. Um, <laughs> Just in case, Mr. Peterson mentioned that he was the only one on stage who's worked in the private sector. Well, I've had 30 years of experience and all of that but seven was in the private sector. I'm currently also the chief executive officer of a real estate investment company. There's other people on the stage who have, who have also worked in the private sector. And I think it is important to have private sector experience as well. And that's why I'm running to be Prime Minister of Canada because I'm the only one who has had significant financial experience in both the private sector and in government. Thank right. you. Uh, Mr. Alexander, a right of rebuttal. I just wanted to add that many of us on this stage have significant private sector experience. I myself, not being in Parliament, I'm also working in the private sector. And that's why we understand from both sides, those of us who've been in government, uh, in the diplomatic service in my case, and in the private sector, why it's important to be careful about temporary foreign workers, to put Canadians first, to complete our domestic market, to tear down trade barriers among provinces and territories. Thank you. Our next question comes from Lori Deal in Beachville, Nova Scotia. Historically, the conservative movement in Canada has suffered from ideological splits and infighting. What will you do if elected leader to promote and protect the unity of the conservative party? Mr. Scheer. This is one of the main themes of my campaign. We absolutely need a leader who can keep every single kind of conservative not only in the tent, but excited about working in the next election to help us win back government in 2019. I know I am that leader. I can keep every kind of conservative united on the things that bring us together. Conservatives like to talk a lot of and fight a lot about all the things we disagree on, but there's so much more we do agree on. There's so much more common ground that we can find and work towards, and that's how we win. We always lose when we're divided. My priority will, make sure, will be to make sure that every kind of conservative feels like they have a home in our party and is excited to help elect our candidates in 2019. Thank you. Mr. O'Toole. Thank you, Laurie, in Nova Scotia. That's where I got started in uh, politics, was in Nova Scotia. We're not divided as a party. We're very strong and we're forming a strong opposition in Ottawa. One third of our MPs are brand new, and that's helping bring some new perspective. But our loss, and our particularly loss of great people, I see a few in the audience here, in Atlantic Canada was tough. That will be a priority for me as leader. My time here in the military, I got married in Atlantic Canada and then went to law school here. I was also involved in electing John Hamm in Nova Scotia and sat on the provincial board. So I got my roots as a Tory in Atlantic Canada, and I'm trying to make sure that as leader, I will work with you to make sure we rebuild in every riding to make them winnable and get good people back. Atlantic Canadian Tories know that when we work together, we win. You'll win with me in the next election. Thank you. Mr. Chong. Well, thank you, Laurie from Nova Scotia for the question. I'm a fiscal conservative who also believes in democratic reform. I'm also a conservative who believes in the right of social conservatives to express their views on matters of conscience and to vote accordingly in my record demonstrates that I'm willing to stand up for those rights. I'm also the kid of immigrant parents. Uh, one parent who came here from Hong Kong in 1952 as a Chinese immigrant, and another parent who came here from the Netherlands in the 1960s. So I understand the immigrant experience and what it takes to unify conservatives in regions like the GTA. I believe that the way forward for our party is not to focus on divisive social issues, but to come forward with a robust economic agenda to create jobs and economic growth across this country. That's what unifies conservatives. That's the winning formula. That's the formula Mr. Harper used. That's the one I'll use. Thank you. Mr. Peterson. Thanks, Monica. In 1986, I started a three-decade career at the grassroots of the Conservative Party of Canada. I was with the Progressive Conservative Party, worked raising money in Western Canada for the Progressive Conservative Party, and I stood up, put my hand up, strongly supporting the merger of our party in 2003. We owe a deep amount of gratitude. We're here today because of Stephen Harper and Peter McKay. That was not an easy thing to do, and I am not here to see the efforts of that, those two big men and their efforts frittered away. So the way to do that, ladies and gentlemen, is to come to you, the grassroots. I announced on November 1st a $2 million amount that I'm gonna raise on your behalf in all 338 writings across the country so that you can update your uh, websites, you can update your social media, you can get out into the community, you can do it bottom up, not top down. Thank you. Mr. Lindsay. 
I said at the beginning that I think we need to look beyond this leadership debate. A, a real leader is an individual who identifies what the challenges are in front of them and brings people to the table who are focused on those issues. So I agree with what has been said here about those divisive issues. We right now are under the microscope of Canadians who are looking to us to see if we can actually all pull together. We need to have a leader that can actually do that. I can tell you that I work with doctors. They are the most difficult group of individuals to work with at a senior level. And what I do is I say, stay focused. Come to the table only if you want to make it better. And the reality is, is that Conservatives can, fiscal Conservatives have the answer for Canada. Thank you. Mr. Saxton. Thank you. The Conservative Party of Canada is a big tent party. We welcome all Canadians who have Conservative values. To win back the government in the next election, we have to win back the cities. We did not win a single seat in the four major cities in Canada in the last election. And in order to do that, we have to listen to the issues that are facing people in the cities. Issues such as housing affordability, transportation, and jobs. And of course, jobs is the big one. And I'm a businessman. And I can tell you that small and medium-sized businesses are the biggest job creators in this country. We have to help small and medium-sized businesses to create jobs. That means lowering taxes and lowering red tape. Because I can tell you as a small businessman, there's a lot of red tape that one has to go through in order to file certain things with the government. So as a businessman, I know how to create jobs, but I need your help. AndrewSaxton.ca. Merci Thank beaucoup. You. Thank you. Ms. Raitt. Thank you. Thanks, Lori, for the question. So I can tell you that on national interests, I am a traditional conservative on foreign policy. And it, when it comes to the economy, I am blue collar and I'm hard work and I'm common sense because those are the roots that I was given growing up in Cape Breton Island. So I guess I'm a, a pragmatic conservative. But I also know this, that it's important to show that you're responsible and that you're compassionate and that you're thoughtful. And those things, too, are conservative values. We're already a united party. We're made up of a lot of people with a lot of different ideas. And I can tell you this, I'm absolutely committed to ensuring that we have this unity and we respect all opinions. I've done that my entire life as a minister in Stephen Harper's government. I'll continue to do that. Thank you. Monsieur Bernier. Merci. Thank you. We are a very united party, and the important thing is to promote values, conservative values, values that are at the very foundation of Western society, freedom, individual responsibility, and respect. Respect for differences in our party. Yes, there are some conservatives who are fiscal conservatives. There are also conservatives who are social conservatives. And I, what I am suggesting is respect for all, and also respect for their democratic right to introduce legislation on whatever they feel is important. And if it is uh, uh, something involving conscience, I think uh, parliamentarians should be free to vote as they see fit. So in order to be united, we have to work together. And I think the important thing for the future generation is the economy and policies that will create jobs. Thank you. I am the longest serving member of parliament, of the conservative member of parliament. These good friends of mine are just rookies, you know, compared to <laughs> But, well, let me talk about seniors. It is terrible that these days seniors are unable to meet their basic needs. But the OAS and GIS increases do not actually help them meet their needs. Therefore, I propose that these increases to OAS and GIS be equal to the increases that members of parliament get. Our seniors deserve the same kind of treatment. Let me repeat this promise. OIS and GIS increase will equal the same as the members of parliament get for their salaries. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Alexander. Laurie, I'm a conservative because of <clears throat> stories that I heard around the dinner table growing up. Uh, and they were stories of unity and inclusion, and they were the stories of Canada about establishing the rule of law in this country in the 17th and 18th centuries, about confederation about leadership in great wars, about ending the discrimination in the immigration system in the 1950s and 60s. These were moves made by conservatives promoting women into cabinet posts. These are moves we need to move, make again as we bring the country together. I think we have a great team here on the stage. 
hundreds of thousands of people across this country that are with us. We need to do more in Atlantic Canada, more with young people, more in urban areas, more in the north to bring this country together. Our potential has never been greater. Thank you. Mr. Lemieux. We must respect the values and beliefs of all Canadians and of all members of our parties. And to respect them, we must allow them to have these beliefs and to be able to discuss them and debate them. In Canada, we have a strong and healthy democracy, one in which we should be able to discuss openly and respectfully any issue which is of importance to Canadians. And we want all views in our party because that leads to more fulsome debate and to better debate and discussion within the party. But it is undemocratic to say that a debate is over, that it is closed, that it will not be reopened under any circumstances. It shows no respect to those people that have these values and have these beliefs and want to express them within the party or within the country. As leader, I would encourage discussion and debate on all subjects that are of interest Thank to you. Canadians. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Blaney. Laurie, tonight we talk of our difference. I support farmers. I believe in supply management. I believe in strong agriculture, like in St. Francois de Madawaska. But we also have a lot in common. We hate deficit. We hate liberal shenanigans. And we hate wasteful spending. We all agree on that. And there's something that makes us different from all the other parties in this country. We respect independence on moral issue. And this is very important to me. I remember my colleague Stephen Fletcher. He had some views. My colleague Brad had some other views. We are a family, and we respect each other. And that's an added value, not only for our party, but for our country. I will respect that. Merci. Merci. Mr. Trost. After the Vancouver Convention in May, I got letters from party members saying they wanted to leave the Conservative Party because they felt their views were being disrespected. I encouraged them to stay, and it's one of the reasons I'm running today. Because all branches of Conservatives need to be part of this party. Those people were by and large social Conservatives, social Conservatives like me, like the late Elsie Wayne. They need to be included in the party. I am one of them. I'm a fiscal Conservative low tax, cut regulation, those people need to be included and reached out into our party. Strong on national defense, supportive of traditional conservative cultural values. The way we win, the way we grow, the way we stay together as a party is by having a leader who represents all wings of the Conservative Party. I am 100% Conservative all across the board. Thank you. Ms. Leach. Dans l'organisation de ce parti depuis 1979. I have been involved uh, in this Lorsque party since 1979 when I was a volunteer in my first campaign in Fort McMurray. I love the party, I love I its love members. This party and I love its members. And I can tell you I've been listening to you every day. I've heard what you had to say. That you don't want a top-down operation from Ottawa telling you what to do. You want someone that represents you, that's been on the ground, that's hammered in lawn signs and delivered literature just like you have. I've done that, and I will be the leader that you can depend on to make sure you're supported and you can participate. Thank you. Next, we'll move back to themes. This theme is family, children, and health. Nous allons ensuite passer with Tim. Ce thème est this famille, theme enfance, now is family, santé. children, and health. Les provinces ont des besoins the différents, provinces have different needs, but the federal government bases its transfer payments on the number of inhabitants, on population. Do you think we should uh, keep the current model or change it? And if so, why? You know, one approach is to privatize everything and eliminate government. That's the approach Maxime Bernier has to health care and everything else, to abolish government. As a pediatric surgeon, I would take a different approach, an approach based on the patient and not on uh, problems between the different levels of government. The federal government has a significant role to play in health care, whether that be in the distribution of, of transfer payments or otherwise. But let's be clear. What we should be about, most importantly, you and your loved ones, you deserve to be taken care of. When you arrive at an emergency department, you deserve to get the care that you want. Thank you. Mr. Trost. All Conservatives 
Must respect the privilege of the provinces on health care issues and on health uh, transfers to the provinces. I believe that a clear system, a system clear, a system that is regular, is what we need. There are two things that we need in the health care system. We don't need more government regulation. We just need to make sure our health care system and any other social system like that is both portable, our health care, and universal. Other than that, the government needs to stay out of the way of the provinces. C'est important pour le gouvernement fédéral It's important for the federal government le, le, to respect le, le, le de la province. the province's Merci. power and jurisdiction. For 10 years, uh, in the midst of an economic crisis, as a conservative government, we continued to increase health care transfers to unprecedented levels. But uh, before, as you know, under Jean Chrétien and Paul uh, Martin, they had uh, savagely cut those transfers. And what do we have now? We have the new liberal version, Justin Trudeau, who is uh, imposing conditions on those transfers because there's a deficit. And also, he's saying to conservatives, so, consumers, well, you don't need this. Uh, we'll let uh, big companies take money out of your pockets uh, and do what they like. So what we need to do is work in partnership with the provinces, not impose conditions on them, and that's what we will do as official opposition. We'll ask the federal government to transfer the money so that people get high quality health care. Thank you very much. The health care model has to change. As a leader, I uh, commit to providing stable funding. We will work in a constructive manner with the provinces. And as leader, I will pay particular attention to the funding of certain programs, including improving funding of palliative care so that Canadians will never find themselves in a situation where they are considering uh, and health, assisted I also have suicide. About what euthanasia and assisted suicide will mean for medical practitioners, such as nurses and doctors, who fundamentally believe that euthanasia and assisted suicide are wrong. I feel that they should have the freedom to provide excellent health care for Canadians without being required to act against their deeply held convictions. Merci. Thank you. Mr. Alexander, Il faut être pragmatique. it is important Notre to be pragmatic and realistic. Système our system, our universal public health care system, must evolve in order to reflect uh, these times and meet the needs of our citizens of today. It, that is pro practically impossible these days. Whether it's here in Moncton or elsewhere, it's very difficult for a company to sell a new service or a new procedure or to make that part of the system, to introduce innovation into the system and to measure results. We have to reduce waiting times. We have to ensure that all Canadians have access to a family doctor. There has to be access for everyone to quality care services. Thank you. Our health care system poses challenges, but it is the best one in the world. We have to ensure that we take care of all Canadians who need health care. We have to ensure that future generations will be able to take advantage of this system. How? Through a cooperative approach with the provinces. Merci. Merci, Monsieur Bernier. Merci. Thank Notre you. Système de santé Our health care system is under provincial jurisdiction uh, and must respect Canada, the Constitution. As you know, in Canada, we have the worst uh, waiting times compared to other OC, OECD countries. And it's not because we're not Chaque putting enough money in the system. Every province spends 40 percent of their budget on health care. So we have to change the system, and that's the solution I'm proposing. In other words, rather than transferring $36 billion a year to the province, Provinces, we should be transferring tax points, and that will encourage so the provinces our, to be more our effective. Our healthcare system is 100% under provincial jurisdiction, and we have in Canada the worst wait time in among OECD countries. So we must change the system, and the way to do that is to transfer tax points to provinces, like Macaris asked us to do a couple of years ago. Thank you.
Ms. Reid. Thank you. I think we need to focus on the people who have been forgotten in the system. The reason why I'm running for the leadership is to help those people who are having problems. My family allowed me to understand the real problems that Canadians are facing. The federal government has considerable influence over social and health transfers. By working with the provinces, we can establish priorities such as waiting times, mental health issues, uh, the use of opiates, and an increase uh, in care for seniors. Thank you very much. The Fraser Institute has just published a report that uh, confirms that wait times for specialists in Canada is the longest ever recorded in Canada, and the worst is here in New Brunswick. We spend money without having any results. I know that because my mother had a stroke, and I took her to the emergency department, and she waited a number of hours before she was treated. She had uh, her uh, stroke right in the waiting room of the hospital. We have to do better for patients. We have to be more focused on the patient. We have to give patients the ability to control how and when they receive medical treatment. This is, this is something that's super important. I, I went to Afghanistan. It is incredibly important to be a patriot. The economy is critically important. But I live in the world of medicine at the present time, and I haven't heard anything that is going to actually change the system. What happens at the present time is that we are incapable, because of our Health Care Act, of actually managing the health care system at the present time. We have the worst wait times, uh, which has been talked about. We have a lack of innovation. and the costs are unsustainable at the present time. We need to turn it upside down. What we need to do is we need to revise the, in the entire Canadian Health Act. It doesn't represent what Canadians think is health care any longer. We need to change the way that we are actually dealing with the Health Act. I've got th a real plan to actually change medicine Thank and you. manage it. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Peterson. Merci, Monica. Je suis uh, uh, d'accord avec Monica. Maxime. Uh, uh, lorsque je suis Premier I agree with Maxime. When, when I will be grande, Prime Minister in 2019, my first responsibility will be to make as much money available as possible to the provinces. And the only uh, way of doing it, and let's be clear of this, we are vul vulnerable. People who are age 65 or more, and I'm catching up, I'm age 62. Uh, think about all the retirees with the lower interest rates, rates and the health needs, you are at risk. My plan, therefore, to eliminate wasteful spending and to increase the transfers to the provinces uh, will be of help to retirees because they will have protection today and for tomorrow as well. Thank you for the question. I think that what's very important here notre to protect our, health, our public health system is to implement a long-term long plan, plan for transfers for from the federal to the provinces. Harper, Under the Harper government, transfers increased by 6% each and every year. And I think that this will enable provinces to plan for the long term. So I think it's very important to have these transfers in health for the long term uh, predictable and giving provinces this flexibility that they need to implement changes in the system in their own jurisdiction. Merci. Mr. O'Toole. Thank you. We have a health system uh, for access to everyone all over the country. We must ensure fair access to each and every province, particularly provinces that that have, I have a, track a lowering record population. Here. When I left Atlantic Canada, I took a, a bit of it with me, and I helped create a group called East Coast Connected that worked with the provinces on population growth strategies, on economic development. That's the same approach I'll take as Prime Minister, working with the provinces to make sure they benefit from immigration and from economic development on the ground so you can support the programs despite some of the demographic challenges. And then the federal government's leadership should be to ensure that there's that equitable approach across the country. Thank you. Mr. Scheer. C'est une grande ironie que les libéraux, How ironic on nous that liberals 
have attacked us during the campaign on our level of support for the health system in provinces. And what exactly did they do about it? They maintained everything at the same level. I mean, it's really uh, lying to the Canadian public. We don't believe in a centralizing government. We're supporting provinces and their right to innovate. In Saskatchewan, we have an innovative way of reducing wait times for MRI scans. And the federal Liberal Health Minister has ordered the Saskatchewan government to stop this innovative way to reduce wait times. For the Liberals, the goal is an ideological one, and we achieve equality by finishing last together. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay, you have a 30-second rebuttal. I like Maxime, and Maxime is completely wrong when he comes to the provinces. All that's going to happen is that if we push it back to the provinces, we're going to have a different jurisdiction to blame. There is no question that the federal government has a role. Every person in this room thinks that they can move from one coast to another and have the same kind of health care. Well, you can't. So the federal government has a role. It has a role to play. We need to change the Health Care Act. It needs to be more responsive. We need to work in conjunction with the provinces, but the federal government has a role. And don't forget one of the most thank important you. things, First thank Nation. You. Mr. Peterson, you have a 30-second rebuttal. I do, thank you. Uh, this, this cuts across, really, this was where the rubber hits the road, our finances and our health. And I just want to be clear that the elimination of the corporate income tax that I'm proposing is already being done. It's been done in Ireland. It's been done in the Baltic states. It's been done in, in countries around the Gulf. And it's the plan that the American government is working on right now. My plan will boost provincial revenues, provincial coffers. And where do you think that that money goes? It goes to seniors. It goes to kids. It goes to people who need it. Health care and finances, ladies and gentlemen, are linked together. Thank you. The next question for this theme is the following. The current, gov current government policies seem to encourage older Canadians to ret retire despite being able and willing to continue to contribute to the labour force. In parts of Canada, especially here in New Brunswick, that presents a major challenge. We have an ageing population to support, but a smaller workforce to rely on for that support. What would you do to change this trend? Mr. Trost. Let me simplify that question. It basically comes down to this. What will you do to grow the economy? Because a growing economy attracts people and uh, helps everything. Social programs, populations, demographics. Very simple. You start by cutting taxes. You cut regulations. Something that would specifically help for here in New Brunswick, you change the, the, the uh, equalization system, which claws back your natural resources, half of it. New Brunswick could then go out and develop without losing half of the value, its own uh, tight shale, gas and oil deposits. You do things like that. You cut down on taxes, you cut down on regulation. Government doesn't make jobs, the private sector makes jobs. We need to get the Liberals out of the way. All they're doing is making it harder for the economy to grow. Thank you. Ms. Leach. I want to restrict expenditures by the government. The public sector must be productive. The private sector has to grow. People like to complicate things, and nothing's complicated. Right now, under this Liberal government, due to debt and deficit, we're seeing more jobs lost, particularly here in Atlantic Canada. As was just mentioned, we need to create jobs. We need to build the Energy East pipeline to help create those jobs. Prosperity, as you know, is created in the private sector, not by the public sector. I'm capping government spending so we can reduce that size of government and make sure the private sector can flourish. Thank you. Mr. Shear. You know, there are so many similarities between New Brunswick and Saskatchewan. For years, our number one export wasn't wheat or barley or even oil or gas. It was our young people. And they left the province because there just wasn't the opportunity there. Government needs to create the conditions for a society to grow. We do have an aging population in Canada. I've got five kids. I'm trying to do my part. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't know how much more I can do. But uh, we, we need to make sure that we have programs in place that attract investments, so that businesses attract young people to stay where they're from and indeed to come from around the world. We also need to address the anxieties that seniors have when they are on fixed incomes. And one thing that not a lot of people are talking about is what inflation does to savings and pension plans. And as Prime Minister, I would tackle that issue. Thank you. Mr. O'Toole. 
Thank you. And this highlights a critical problem and something I've spoken about in some of my answers already. In the 1970s, we had seven people entering or in the workforce for every senior. Today it's about four. In 20 years, it will be two people in the workplace for each senior. It's unsustainable, and the Trudeau government's job crisis is compounding it. Whenever I speak to people in Atlantic Canada, I've been in New Brunswick for the last two days, they talk about the risks of their young people getting educated at some of the finest institutions in the country and then leaving. The job crisis for our young people, which Mr. Trudeau calls job churn, is also impacting our seniors and the sustainability of our programs, particularly here in Atlantic Canada. As I said, the only candidate on the stage that has worked on these issues before running for Parliament, they'll be a priority for me. Thank you. Mr. Chong. Uh, merci pour la question. Je fais mon Thank travail you for the aussi. question. I'm also doing enfants. my work. Et, uh, I have three children. Ma and my wife told me that maybe a fourth, uh, but we <laughs> so, already have a dog. We got a dog instead. That was her decision and I respect it. Um, to help with our aging population, I think one of the things we should do is to double the working income tax benefit. This was a benefit introduced by Minister Flaherty in 2007. It provides assistance to low-income Canadians and to Canadians working in a minimum wage job. So if I become leader and if we become government in 2019, we would double the working income tax benefit. This encourages older Canadians to stay in the workforce and encourages those not in the workforce to enter the workforce. And that's one way to deal with our aging demographic. Thank you. Mr. Peterson. I, I feel a little bit of a movement here. So I have three children, a stepson and two golden retrievers. <laughs> And I also have a firm belief, ladies and gentlemen, that the $40 billion that would have gone to corporate income tax but would come back into the economy when, as Prime Minister, I introduce the elimination of the corporate uh, income tax, that amount of money, that would be equivalent to tripling all hydro investments across Canada. That would be the equivalent of doubling the Alberta oil sands investment, yes. That would be the equivalent of doubling conventional oil and gas investment, my hometown of Grand Prairie, Alberta. And for those of you in Ontario who are watching, those of you who are under the pain of a Liberal government in Ontario, my tax plan would be the equivalent of six times as much investment in manufacturing than you have today. That's my plan. I want you to follow me. Thank you. Mr. Lindsay. Healthcare. It's been said before, but healthcare and the economy are actually tied together. And uh, while we're on the same theme, I think I'm the oldest one here, and I'm going to stay in the workforce because I have to, and I have three children, and I've got one grandchild, and I want them to have the same kind of opportunities that I have had. It is about the economy, it is about reducing taxes, and it is about making sure that we manage the biggest programs that we have in Canada, such as health care, prudently. We can reduce taxes, but we can also manage things better, and there is a responsibility to do it. So in looking at youth and in looking at adults, it is all the same game. We need to have an economy that functions robustly. Thank you. Mr. Saxton. Thank you. When we're talking about retirement, I'd like to recognize my good friend in the front row here, the former Speaker of the Senate, the Honorable Noel Kinsella, who recently retired from the Senate and freed up a spot for somebody else. So mer merci beaucoup, Noel. It's great to see you here tonight. And thank you for supporting my campaign, Noel. I, I appreciate that very, very, very much. <laughs> He, he told me he did. I didn't make that up. We need to look after seniors in this country. It's seniors who built Canada and made it the great country that it is today, and we have a responsibility to look after seniors. We also have a responsibility for people who are still in the workforce to create jobs so that they can provide for their families. Free trade agreements is something that the, uh, the previous Harper government did a great job in promoting. We opened up markets with f over 40 new countries, and that's the way to the future. And I see it's great for the Maritimes because you're going to have products coming here to Europe with the new free trade agreement with Europe coming Thank through you. your ports. Thank you, Mr. Saxon. Ms. Freight. Merci, Michael. Mon mari m'a donné un chien aussi. Thank you. I also have a dog. My husband gave me a dog, by the way, and I have two children. Um, so as you probably know, Mr. Harper and our government moved retirement age to 67 in this country. I was a member of cabinet and I voted in favor of it because I thought it made a lot of sense. But as well, I have a mother who worked for 40 years in the Cape Breton Regional Hospital System and ended up having two knee replacements as a result of so many years on her feet delivering the trays to the patients, and it was hard on her. 
So I know that when you work for that long period of time, it can be hard on your body. As the Labour Minister, I was very happy to work on ergonomic issues within the Canada Labour Code, and we should always keep that in mind. But the reality is this, is that I have great experience in Alzheimer's. To keep active is extremely important, and we should encourage seniors to be in the workplace. Thank you. Monsieur Bernier. Thank you. It's all about growing the economy. And I think it is not normal in Canada, after 149 years, that we don't have an, uh, an economic union in Canada, like the father of our constitution wanted. So what we need to have, we need to have a real free trade in Canada, because I think that a nurse in Moncton must be able to work as, as a nurse in Montreal or in Vancouver. So more free trade and lower taxes. And my plan, I will lower taxes to all Canadians. Every single Canadian will pay lower taxes. And that, that means uh, a saving of $30 billion for Canadians. Speaking about health care, it is a provincial jurisdiction, and we must respect the Constitution, and we must give the opportunity to every province to do the changes that they need to do for being more efficient with more private delivery of services. Thank you. Mr. Bry. Thank you. Deficits, high taxes, and a culture of entitlement are in the DNAs of the Trudeaus. My grandson, who is in the crowd, he asked, Grandpa, will I be burdened with these high taxes? This Trudeau DNA may be acceptable to socialist Cuba, the country <laughs> they admire. You know. Did you know, folks, the liberal culture of entitlement is back again? They, the Liberal MPs, are now asking you, you taxpayers, to pay for their democracy, for pay their elections, the subsidy that we took out. Ladies and gentlemen, Canadians work hard and pay their taxes and look for a government that respects their tax dollars, the Conservative government. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Alexander. Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, my wife and I have just two daughters. So I, I guess that's why they made me Minister of Immigration. Uh, and every time I came to Atlantic Canada, premiers, chambers of commerce would say uh, how urgent it was to increase immigration here, how urgent it was to, to solve this demographic problem with immigration. And it is. And we need to do more. But we will not succeed in meeting this challenge, neither in Atlantic Canada nor across the country, unless we have the Atlantic advantage. And for me, that is lower taxes, not just on the corporate side, but personal as well. Universities connected to incubators, a vibrant energy sector, a doubling of our defense budget, and real action to bring home the benefits of free trade with Europe, including through Atlantic Canada's magnificent ports. Thank you. Mr. Lemieux. Thank you. The question was about seniors that want to work. And as leader, I would implement initiatives to reward a strong work ethic. If seniors choose to work, then we need to have jobs for them to go to. We create jobs by strengthening our economy. We strengthen our economy by approving projects like Energy East. We also strengthen our economy by lowering taxes. When I lower your taxes, you will have more money in your pockets, which you will spend within our economy. Even if you're saving to buy that car, you will ultimately spend that money within our economy. And in doing so, you will create jobs. Let me finish by saying that I am opposed to all carbon taxes. Sorry about that, Mike. Uh, because they are a burden on all Canadians, and they do not create jobs. They kill jobs. Thank you. Mr. Blaney. To me, the question, Monica, is how do we keep the youth here in New Brunswick? Where there's one way, by offering them job opportunity and great quality of life. This is what is happening in Halifax with the shipyard project. I've been there. I see the city is moving. I saw it yesterday in St. Francois de Madawaska with the poultry production, a great, great agriculture system that we have here. We don't want to destroy it. We want to preserve it and grow it. And also, we need to lower electricity because we need to that will our um, small and medium businesses will create jobs. Donc, la façon de garder les so jeunes au Nouveau-Brunswick, c'est en offrant des opportunities here is to provide opportunities to them, and also by ensuring that we all we not only have low taxes, but we have low electricity yes. bills, and that's Mr. what I'm Rye, suggesting. You have a 30 second rebuttal. I do. Eh? Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you from my very long experience in politics, not all issues are black and white. They can also be brown. <laughs> 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 
Thank you. We move back. <laughs> Mr. Chong, you have a 30 second rebuttal. Yeah, thank you. I am the candidate who's come forward with a credible plan to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. In fact, my plan has been reviewed by four leading economists at four of Canada's leading universities, two of them in Alberta, and each of the four of them have praised my plan. In fact, Mark Cameron, Prime Minister Harper's former head of policy in the Prime Minister's office has endorsed my plan. It starts with one of the largest income tax cuts in Canadian history, which we would introduce in our first budget of the spring of 2020. It's a good plan. Check it out at chong.ca. Thank you. We move back to audience, audience questions to close out our debate. Nous allons passer aux questions de l'auditoire afin de clore le débat. We will now move on to audience questions in order to close off the debate. The first question is from Daryl Mills in Nova Scotia. I supported the Conservative Party throughout my life. I would like there to be more jobs in the Maritimes so that my son can come back from Alberta. What will you do to create jobs in the Maritimes? Daryl, I've... Uh, Jobs, 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 that's the answer. And quality jobs, low electricity, prices, and also uh, we need to lower tax. But there are people here in New Brunswick that we need to consider. We, you talk of violence uh, today and violence against women. Malheureusement, il y a beaucoup de violence dans les communautés autochtones. There's a lot of violence in Aboriginal communities, and uh, there are many women who were killed and have disappeared. And in many cases, this was by a family member. We have to have the courage to bring forward new solutions to provide opportunities to the Aboriginal people and uh, you speak to them as equals. And uh, we don't need the Indian Act. So what I intend to do is put forward a concrete proposal to restore equality so that these young people can participate in the Atlantic economy. Thank you very much. This question has to do with job creation once again, and it's important to say that a vigorous uh, economy is the best engine for creating jobs. And in order to stimulate our economy, as a Prime Minister, I intend to lower taxes so that Canadians can keep more of their money in their pockets. So that means supporting Canadian. our Canadian economy. And when we spend our money Canadian, within our own economy, we are helping to ensure there can be job creation. The other key factor is lower taxes for businesses, because businesses are the ones that create jobs right across the country. And as leader, I will stimulate the economy in Canada with your help. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur Alexander. Merci, Daryl, pour Thank you, uh, Daryl, for that question. The Atlantic uh, advantage de passe à travers, means, oui, une union yes, nationale a national union in uh, terms of our economy, mais aussi a strengthened economy, but also strengthened connections aussi à to the Atlantic economy, greater uh, wealth. Tous avoir and of course, you have tremendous wealth uh, in terms of your universities, uh, and you need de, to be incubators of new companies in order to uh, support the government. That means energy, that means uh, defense, uh, that means our army, and increasing our role on the world stage. And it also means free trade with Europe, which uh, means greater prospects for this region. Mr. O'Brien, people need jobs, but students are having trouble finding jobs. We have to encourage them to start their own enterprise through the, though the financial difficulties are too great. We need to have access to capital and less bureaucracy. Les damarages, the enterprise, égale des emplois. New businesses Merci. means more jobs. Merci. Ah. Monsieur Bernier. Merci. Thank you. Uh, create ici, to create jobs maritimes, here in the Maritimes, de well, I don't have any specific plan. I don't have any specific plan to create jobs in Quebec or in Western Canada. But I do have a plan to ensure that uh, entrepreneurs can create jobs. So you don't need a special program for one region. When you have ideas that are based on responsibility and freedom, when you lower taxes for all entrepreneurs, they will be able to create opportunities in the different regions of 
traiter toutes country. les régions de façon so équitable like et respectueuse. Je veux abolir les subventions aux manner. grandes entreprises et utiliser cet argent pour réduire les taxes et les impôts de chaque entrepreneur de partout au Canada et pas seulement ici dans les maritimes, Canada, mais de partout. On va être capable de baisser le taux d'imposition de 15 à 10 et les entreprises vont créer des richesses. Il faut créer les conditions favorables, c'est ce que je fais. Merci. Merci. J'aime les, mar Thank les you. emplois maritimes, I bien like, sûr, parce que uh, j'ai été le harbour master en Toronto, la première harbour master ever. Nous devons assurer la formation pertinente. We have to ensure pertinente. that there is Aussi, relevant training um, available as well. Je pense que nous croyons la que la I croissance de l'économie passée par la réduction de l'impôt, la réduction des règlements taxes, et l'extension du commerce. Mais this is what I would say trade. about the most important thing about maritime jobs. We have to be bold. We have to get our resources to market because maritime jobs start where the port is. We need to continue to invest in our ports like we did under Stephen Harper's government. I was very, very proud, je suis très fier, of all the work that we did with all the ports in Canada. And I can tell you, I would continue to do so. These are good jobs. Thank you. Monsieur Saxton. Merci. C'est absolument nécessaire de trouver une façon de transporter nos biens au marché. To, uh, get our On perd des milliards de dollars chaque We're, uh, année parce qu'on a un saut client pour notre pétrole. À cause de ça, on reçoit un prix inférieur pour notre oil. Et c'est pourquoi nous avons un prix plus bas pour notre pétrole. On peut créer des, des milliers d'emplois ici dans les maritimes. Si nous changons des choses, nous pouvons créer des emplois dans les maritimes et aussi assurer le prix mondial. On a besoin de construire les infrastructures nécessaires pour l'exportation. Structure to plus, export our oil. Also, thanks to the free trade agreement with Europe, there will be new opportunities for other pour industries pêcheurs, here exemple, in the Maritimes. For example, the fishery, because I know that Europeans homards. love lobster. Merci, Monsieur Lindsay. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. It's not the government that creates jobs. It really is businesses. And as other people said, there needs to be infrastructure. We need to spend intelligently, smartly, and we have to focus government funding on infrastructure that generates real value. It's one of my favorite places in the world, and this year the price of lobster was great. I have seen more shiny trucks around Nova Scotia than I have for a very long period of time. Without infrastructure, without ports, without interprovincial capability of actually moving that and libre change to sell that and lobster free trade. elsewhere, we won't have it. So free trade, interprovincial infrastructure. Thank you. Mr. Peterson. Thank you. Uh, the question France? came from a young woman, did it not? No, Mr. Darrow Mills. Oh, okay. The reason I'm asking is uh, because uh, if you want uh, something to be said, uh, you ask a man. If you want something to be done, ask a woman. And my plan to create jobs involves women. I have two daughters, 121, 128, and both uh, are seeking to develop. Now, with uh, the elimination of corporate taxes, we'll be able to get the economy back on track, create new opportunities that will benefit a lot of people, particularly young women, young mothers, and others who are looking for their first job. They will be the initial beneficiaries, and that's why I'm so delighted. Mr. Chong, is this the last question? No. I believe that businesses do create jobs in Canada, and as a government, we we can help businesses to create those jobs and to stimulate growth. As a leader, I will lower corporate taxes and individual taxes. I will also introduce one of the biggest uh, tax cuts uh, ever seen in Canada. That will create jobs, that will create economic growth, and it's more important than ever before because the new U.S. government will be introducing uh, tax cuts as well. My economic plan has been reviewed by four university economists and they applauded the plan. Thank you. Mr. O'Toole. Thank you, Daryl. That is a very good question that shows that prosperity in a region can lead to economic spin-offs for every region in the country. It's common that people want an opportunity to work in Canada and sometimes they have to leave one part to go to another. 
we need to make it a priority for our young people to be able to stay here in Atlantic Canada. And I'm proud to have been part of a government that provided some opportunity. The European Trade Agreement with agricultural and wood and other exports. We had the shipbuilding contract, which alone will reduce the unemployment rate in Nova Scotia by one point and will help the entire region. Energy East for jobs here in St. John and New Brunswick, but also helping our Western friends. It's a family and our opportunity in Canada is to work and provide for your family. Thank you. Mr. Shear. Alors, uh, Daryl a mentionné uh, Darryl uh, mentioned Alberta. <coughs> Alberta. Imagine, Alberta. Imagine, de imagine if you were a <laughs> resident of the province next to Alberta for many years, and generation frères, after generation, our brothers and our sisters, uh, and my father-in-law and my sister-in-law actually au, au Alberta moved to Alberta for Et the opportunities there. But now, with a conservative government, C'est le reverse, c'est l'inverse. It's the reverse. People go from Alberta to Saskatchewan because now we have opportunities and prosperity. It's no secret what made people leave Saskatchewan for so many years. It's It was the lack of opportunity. So the federal government needs to do what we've done in Saskatchewan, keep taxes low, attract investment. But perhaps the mo biggest thing we could do is help defeat liberal provincial governments Thank you. in the Maritimes. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Leach. Merci, Daryl. Thank you, Daryl. The first thing I intend to do to increase uh, prosperity and jobs would be to limit federal spending. It is time to, uh, to change the approach in order to have uh, a growing public and private sectors. Most jobs are created in the private sector. That's where we see good jobs happening. For example, I would like to build Energy Est East in order to create those jobs. As a nation, is about building the prosperity for Canadians. It's in the private sector where we create jobs. It's in the private sector where we create opportunities for the average Canadian. We need to cap government spending so we decrease the size of government Thank you. and allow Thank Canadians you, Ms. to reach. Mr. Trost. Country Minister, de aider As Prime je Minister, minister I would help the economy and to do so, des I would like to eliminate taxes. Eliminate I would like to eliminate regulations between provinces, le development, le resource naturel, develop natural resources in all areas et of the country, and finally, and that's important, Listen, it is very listen important to that we as Prime MP. Minister listen not just to what goes on in Ottawa, but to sometimes take the advice, not sometimes, to take the advice always of your local members of Parliament. That's one of the issues that's been bad for the Atlantic Canadian economy. We have an ACOA minister from Toronto. We have a Liberal government that doesn't listen. They're telling Atlantic Canada what's good for the region. As Prime Minister, I'd listen. I wouldn't tell. Thank you. Mr. Blaney, you have a 30-second uh, rebuttal. Le député de Beauce a un plan, uh, un plan pour détruire et s'attaquer à des entreprises ici au Nouveau-Brunswick, des uh, entreprises privées qui créent la richesse et ça sans subvention. Yes, j'ai visité un couloir, un poulailler, une entreprise canadienne croissance fulgurante depuis 20 ans. And they have had tremendous growth for 20 years. I will be continuing to fight for family farms, the regions, and I will stand up for a strong Canadian agriculture. Merci. Shying away uh, from Ray, international cartels. Comme j'ai dit, la réduction des règlements est très important. Uh, we Et want to reduce regulations. That's problem. most important. And I'll tell you what the problem is. It's this: is that there is a treaty called the Ballast Water Treaty that we signed on to in 2006. It is going live in one year. Now, our government was very much on top of it, and we understood the detriment. If this Trudeau government does not do something on this treaty, all shipping in the Great Lakes by Canadian shippers will cease. That is an economic issue. Thank you. Mr. O'Toole, you have a 30-second rebuttal. Thank you, and I'd like to thank you, Monica, for doing such a great job tonight. Some of my colleagues mentioned Energy East in this last uh, round, uh, nuclear energy, uh, small business, but many are mentioning these things for the first time in the middle of a leadership race. I ask our members to look at the track records of all candidates. 
I've been fighting for Energy East in the House of Commons and outside for some years. Nuclear energy, I started a caucus in Ottawa to promote that alternative energy that's GHG emission free. Small business, private sector enterprise, I've been speaking and writing about for years. Thank Check you. it out on my website. Thank you. Mr. Lemieux, you have a 30 second rebuttal. Thank you very much. Uh, one of the themes tonight was family. We didn't really have a question on family, so I just want to let you know that strong families make a strong society which makes for a strong country. Parents experience the tremendous joy of children, but also the tremendous responsibility to raise them well. And under my leadership, the government would recognize parents as the first educators of their children, meaning that parents have the primary responsibility to raise their children. And I would ensure that no government or its policies would place themselves between parents and their children. Thank, Thank you. you. Finally, our last question. It comes from Wesley Kirstead from here in New Brunswick. What will you do to engage the younger generation and explain conservative values to them? Mr. Lemieux? Thank you very much. Well, as the father of five children, I would say I have a, a solid understanding of our youth. Uh, my eldest daughter is 27, and we go down to my son, who is 13. Um, one of the things that we want to do is present engaging ideas, engaging ideas to the Canadian uh, public, but also to conservative members, ideas that will respect their views and beliefs, ideas that will help families to prosper, and ideas that will keep families and Canadians safe from the threats that are in our world today. My campaign is built upon three pillars, democracy, families, and security. And as Conservatives, we will develop a platform on these three pillars that will appeal to Canadians, and together we can defeat Thank the Liberals you. in 2017. Thank you. Mr. Blaney. La politique, est une affaire de confiance. Policies Moi, and politics is a thing of trust. I have agricultural producers that are creating prosperity, and I never changed my mind. For 10 years now, I was at the founding meeting of the Conservative Party, and we committed to have a Canadian agricultural system so that businesses that receive, that receive subsidies, like the American firms who get $100 million, well, I'm happy to stand up. I want, and I know that people want MPs that stand up and take a stand. I'm proud to be a, a member of Parliament. I was proud to be a member of the Conservative Party under Harper, a very honest individual, and uh, had the welfare of Canadians more important than his own welfare. And I want a Conservative government close to the people and that will remain close to the people. You need, to capture the imagination of young, young people, you need to do thing, two things. First of all, you need to have policies that meet their needs. We as Conservatives talk about things for the individual, for the family. The Liberals are the party of bureaucracy, of big government. In the Uber generation, we as Conservatives can be flexible, we can take government away from large institutions, and we can deliver our policies directly to people. Secondly, we need to capture their imagination. When young people volunteer for my campaign, it's generally because they believe in a cause. Joyce, for Joy Smith, one of our MPs, it was the fight against sexual, sexual exploitation. Our cultural values, our social values as Conservatives are the ideals that young people often join. We need to meet their needs. We need to uh, support their ideals. They will support Thank us. Thank you. Ms. Leach. I will engage young Canadians in beating Justin Trudeau in 2019. And we're going to use three tools the best organization in the country, policies that engage the average Canadian that are common sense, and making sure we're communicating. We're talking about common sense ideas, whether that be screening immigrants for Canadian values with face-to-face -face interviews, capping government spending, or making sure women can use pepper spray and mace if they need to defend themselves. These common sense ideas are building a movement. I want to tell you, even if the media is against me, even if they're really negative, if we stand tall, if we stand strong, we actually can make sure individuals know our message. When volunteers hear our message, when they believe we're even stronger, we're going to win in 2019, and that's how Thank we get you. young people Thank involved. Thank you, Ms. Leach. Mr. Shear. I think that young people are specifically attracted to authenticity. And I am a real conservative. I've been espousing what I believe in for uh, years, and I've been fighting for the conservative values that have served us so well my entire time in Parliament. The other thing that young people, I think, are looking for is a positive vision for the future, and that's what we failed to offer in the last election. 
We did a great job attacking our opponents, but we failed to connect with young people, offering them something aspirational. And that's what young people are, are looking for. And in 2019, when they realized that they were promised a lot of sunny ways and sunshine and unicorns and Care Bear economics, <laughs> that the jobs just aren't there, the opportunity isn't there, and the prosperity never materialized. We need a leader who can bring that positive vision of what conservative values do for society to a broader audience of Canadians. Thank you. Mr. O'Toole. Thank you, Monica. We have a government right now that has given up on an entire generation of Canadians. They love photo ops and selfies, but they told young people that they better get used to a decade of underemployment or job churn. That's a failure of leadership. We have a Prime Minister that just loves selfies with young people, but he doesn't have a plan for their future. That's unacceptable. I'm going to be launching a plan that applies some of our conservative principles to show young people we care about your success. In fact, as I've said tonight, we need your success. All generations do. Once they see that opportunity that conservative principles represent will be the key to solving their underemployment, they will vote for us in the next election under my leadership. And I may even take a few selfies along the way. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Chong. Well, thanks, Wesley. I'd say that this race is shaping up to be a very clear choice between two different visions for the Conservative Party. On the one hand, we have a candidate that suggested that immigrants aren't Canadian, anti-Canadian. And they gave examples. that it's not race-baiting or anti-immigrant. But just yesterday, their campaign was endorsed by a white supremacist group called the Council of European Canadians. We have another candidate who stood idly by while protesters were chanting to lock up the democratically elected premier of the province of Alberta. And on the other side, well, I have another vision. I want to build a greater Canadian Canadians Conservative of all races, Party. religions and creeds from all regions of the country that can win in 2019. Join our campaign at chong.ca. Thank you. Mr. Peterson. Well, you know, I've got a long experience. I've coached minor hockey. I've worked uh, with volunteers. I used to be a volunteer junior achievement. I've been in schools across Vancouver, British Columbia. You know what kids, you know what counts for kids is not what you say, it's what you do. We heard a lot of the same old, same old here. It's not going to work. What are we going to do? How are we going to engage? Most important thing, who can stand up to Justin Trudeau? The only new idea here today was my elimination of corporate income tax. All our other policies have been out there, and they're good. Justin Trudeau is going to be a formidable opponent. Qui parmi nous peut débattre Justin Trudeau dans les deux langues? Qui parmi nous peut débattre Justin Trudeau in both official languages? Who amongst us has the best ideas? Young people look at us and say, who is the leader? Who has the values? Who has the experience? I think that person is me. You'll see my policies. You'll see my background. You'll see my priorities at petersonleader.ca. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lindsay. I think that it's a question of, of uh, respect and respect that includes absolutely every Canadian, including our young. It's a question about closing the gap for our youth. It's a question about closing the gap in our society. Ce n'est pas simplement que uh, les conservateurs participent aux médias sociaux, c'est d'avoir respect media, pour les jeunes, leur as leur 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 aspirations, leur aspirations are, rêves. And what are their Il faut faire correspondre l'éducation aux possibilités d'emploi afin que leur langage et l'éducation les opportunités. And education should give those the opportunities. About, are about looking after every single Canadian. Nobody gets left behind on a conservative watch. That includes our youth, it includes every Canadian, and it includes First Nations. Thank you. Mr. Saxton. Merci beaucoup. First of all, I think we need to do a better job of listening to young Canadians and find out what's important to them. And I think we can start by giving them better prospects for jobs in this economy. Because the number one issue in the next election will be the economy. The current Trudeau government is the most economically inept since the last Trudeau government. Global turmoil will also bring economic problems to Canada's doorstep. I have both the international financial experience as well as the domestic political experience to manage these issues, which is why I am the right choice for leader of our party and also to win the next election. But to do so, I will need your support. So please go to my website, andrewsaxton.ca, and sign up this evening. Merci beaucoup, and thanks to all of you Maritimers for hosting us today, and for the last few days, you've given us a very warm welcome. Merci beaucoup. 
Thank you. Ms. Freak. Well, to answer the question, I find I always do better with my 15 and 12 year old when I don't try to tell them what they're supposed to think, but rather tell them what I think and what the solutions are. So what are Canadians thinking about right now? I think what they're preoccupied about is they're worried about their personal debt. I think they're worried about whether or not their kids are going to make it in the world. I think they're really worried about how their parents are going to do. And I think as well they wonder, will I ever get a break? And Justin Trudeau's new tax on private health care plans and dental plans certainly shows them there's no breaks coming for anyone who's just trying to make it work day to day. What I'd say to kids is this. I saw the stats can report today. It's devastating. We need to make sure you get jobs. We need to do paid internships, both private and public sector. And trust me on this, I'll get this job done. Thank you. Monsieur Bernier. Thank you, merci. Uh, I believe the youth, they want a principal politician, a politician that will be authentic and with bold ideas. Um, other candidates tonight, uh, they have a lot of opinions on various issues, but I'm the only one who has a detailed and coherent uh, vision for the country, a vision that will bring more prosperity for all Canadians and also benefit all region of the, of the country. A vision based on individual freedom, personal responsibility, fairness, and respect. A vision that speaks to all Canadians and will win the next election. La seule façon de battre Justin Trudeau en 2019 est capable de s'exprimer dans les deux langues officielles de notre pays. To be able to express oneself in both official languages of our country in French and in English. I am an immigrant and a visible minority, but I have benefited immensely from the freedom guaranteed by the Charter of Rights. This is why people come to our country. But recently, we have seen uneasiness which has become a cause for concern. It is important we speak out. Communities must address extremism in their midst. Muslims must stand up to fundamentalists. Hindus must stand up to fundamentalists. Christians must stand up to fundamentalists. Our country is built on respecting the human rights of everyone. This is our core principle. I have stood for human rights on the international stage, and I will stand for human rights over all in my country. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Mr. Alexander. I think it's those principles that Deepak just outlined that will bring us together, that will bring youth into our party. But I think it's also humility. <clears throat> Leadership in this day and age, as leader of the opposition, as prime minister of this country, requires realizing you don't have all the answers, bringing people together from different points of view, who may not have been in our party in the past, listening to people, inviting them into the process of solving problems for Atlantic Canada, for this whole great country. And secondly, I think we need to be bold and be honest with young people. It is not a pleasant picture in the world behind, beyond our borders. There will be strains on our North American economic free trade arrangements. There is conflict in the world, and Canada has to be strong to be of service to its citizens and to be a model for the world as we know we can be. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Ms. Leach, you have a 30-second rebuttal. The discussion of Canadian values in screening with face-to-face -face in interviews for immigrants is not racist or xenophobic or anti-immigrant. In fact, two-thirds of Canadians want to have this discussion. Every country in the world is having this discussion. And just because the media and the elites don't want to have this discussion doesn't mean we should be afraid of it. Many of my colleagues on this stage I know are intimidated by the media, but I'm going to continue to talk about this because this is common sense. This is what Thank Canadians you, want Ms. to talk Leach. about. And, and that ends our debate this evening. I'd like, I'd like to thank everyone who came out tonight and spent time at home watching with us. Remember, you must be a member to vote at the convention, so don't forget to register. Cela clôt le débat ce soir. J'aimerais remercier tous ceux qui sont venus ici ce soir. I thank all those of you who came here this evening. Okay, that's uh, Monica Barley, the moderator of the second conservative debate, the first, uh, the first one that was bilingual. Fourteen candidates there on stage in Moncton, New Brunswick. Uh, Monica Barley, uh, a lawyer, former leadership can candidate for the New Brunswick Progressive Conservative Party. 
Maybe we can dip down the audio. Um, so the next debate uh, is all in French, and it comes in Quebec City on January 17th. With us to uh, dissect what we heard and saw, CBC poll analyst Eric Grenier, Rachel Curran, former director of policy to Stephen Harper, political strategist Kathleen Monk, and Lindsay Doyle from Summa Strategies. Okay, so that was long, and there were a lot of people there. Um, let's start with this one. Who stood out for you? And you get to start, the sole male of the panel tonight. <laughs> uh, well, it's a little bit of an odd choice, but I thought actually Rick Peterson stood out because I did not know much about him, and he did not look like a candidate who uh, no one had heard of or uh, was uncomfortable on the stage. His yeah. French was very good. I also thought uh, that... There he is there beside Ke Kelly Leach because yeah, he's not a familiar face. No, he ran for the uh, B.C. Conservative <coughs> Party leadership right. and failed to, do, uh, to win that. But also uh, Max and Bernier, Michael Chong coming out with uh, more detailed policies rather than just more... Uh, a broad uh, viewpoints about how things should be. And uh, after a bad week, I'd say Chris Alexander did not have a bad debate. Mm -hmm. And again, he uh, was able to show off his French, which is quite good. Rachel? I know it's a hard question because there's 14 <laughs> people. So, uh, but, but who do you think stood out, or one or many? A, a, a few, I think, stood yeah. out. So Lisa Reid, I think, did much better than I expected her to in French. Um, you know, she clearly has more work to do on that front, but she's also clearly been doing a lot of work and is committed to, mm -hmm. to making progress on that front. So I thought she stood out. Um, Aaron O'Toole was good. Uh, Michael Chong was good. Maxime Bernier was good. Uh, what was really interesting, I thought, was um, how many of these candidates, even Rick Peterson, who we don't know a lot about, uh, smart, articulate, humble, they've got good platforms, they're outlining good ideas. Um, uh, what they're not doing at this point is really differentiating themselves no. from yeah. one another. Mm -hmm. So I thought there were a lot of good performances tonight. I didn't see one candidate um, really separate themselves from the others and distinguish themselves from the pack. Okay. And well, well, there's a whole bunch of points I want to dig into, but let's have everybody go around. And we can also do who what, who didn't do a good job, but start with if there, anyone stood out mm -hmm. for you as, as being, you know, uh, doing a decent job out there. I, I, I have to agree, Michael Chong. Um, I think he was really impressive, and there was a lot of kind of more broad populist statements that were repeated throughout the evening and, and more thematics than mm -hmm. actual ideas. And I think that he came to the table with some, some specifics. Uh, he wasn't afraid to come out on, you know, certain things things like climate change and say, you know, this yeah. party has something he's been consistent about actually the whole way through. Um, so I found him to be uh, the most concise and impressive. Um, to try to keep engaged throughout this debate, I decided to give gold stars to people. So uh, deep no, Deepak, exactly. you didn't even tell us you were doing that. <laughs> we could have done that game with you. Um, so, you know, as predicted, Deepak got a gold star for the Humor Award. He yeah. kept me engaged. He always had the laughs. He was pretty engaging. Even his uh, even his candidate, fellow candidates on stage were kind of laughing with him. So he gets the Humor Award tonight. I think that Peterson, um, as Eric mentioned, he really gets the refreshing or new face kind of award because really he, he you know, his French was good. He's from Grand Prairie, mm -hmm. Alberta. Mm -hmm. You know, he had a strong policy, one that I would disagree with, about <laughs> removing entirely removing the corporate tax. But, you know, he, he put that message out mm -hmm. there. I think... Um, for the Integrity Award, I've got to give it to Chong um, because at the very end, in his closing statement, he did take on both um, Kelly Leach and Chris Alexander for the statements and the kind mm -hmm. of um, calls that they're making in the last few weeks. Um, but tactically, this might be surprising, but tactically I thought that Kelly was really good. I thought that Kelly, by saving her rebuttal, that red um, yeah. kind of card the candidates got to hold up and getting right. that extra 30 seconds right. in the last close was tactically smart. Yep. And, and just so everybody really realize, uh, yeah, you only had one chance mm -hmm. to rebut. So some people mm -hmm. used it really early on, mm -hmm. and she decided to wait until the end. That probably did yeah, work. Yeah, I think a lot of her tactics have been trying to occupy that media space, and so for her to choose, you know, the very end, where a lot of people might have only been tuning in, or when media are going to choose to, to clip it and, you know, say, here are the highlights. So it was strategic, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, and, I, and to poo-poo the media in, in that moment, which, in which, which, swoop. <laughs> which, which helps yeah. her narrative, right? Yes, yeah, please, please put me out there, but I'm also yeah. going to insult you all at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but what that really shows and what you saw throughout the debate, too, yeah. is how much candidates are speaking to party members. They're not speaking sure. to the general public, mm -hmm. right? So Kelly yes, is yeah, speaking yeah. to party members. Yeah. All of the other candidates were doing the same. They were touching on themes and issues that are, that, that, that are really priorities for conservative members right. and conservative supporters. So 
low taxes, economy and the jobs, or, or economy and jobs, support for the private sector, mm -hmm. support for the resource sector, respect mm -hmm. for provincial jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of these were really core kind of conservative tenets yeah. um, that will appeal to conservative members. And that's really who the candidates were speaking to, and that's smart of them to do that. Okay, well, I, well I'm just going to tell the control room I wouldn't mind the French clip next so we can talk about French. But before mm -hmm. we do that, um, the, the other thing, because we were obviously chatting throughout the past hour and a half, as you probably were at home, um, th there there wasn't a lot of, uh, A, there wasn't a lot of bashing of Stephen Harper. Everyone mm -hmm. seemed to, to be, mm -hmm. you know, embracing his record and comfortable with his record on, on almost, not every policy, but a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't a lot of bashing Justin Trudeau either. A, a few moments, mm -hmm. right? But there wasn't, you know, if you're trying to make a decision about who's best to position across from Justin Trudeau, mm -hmm. I, don't know if that, I don't know if that would help you very much there. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I think it is an indication that a lot of these candidates are still trying to figure out how this race mm -hmm. is kind of unfolding. They don't yeah. know who to go after. They're more or less just still introducing themselves, telling members why they could be a good leader. Because while these are, uh, a lot of them are MPs, they're not exactly the highest profile MPs. So yeah. there is still some work to do uh, to uh, make conservatives clear who is standing for what. <clears throat> Uh, so I don't think they're really ready yet to go very hard on the on the opposing because yeah. they're trying to be the next government and also going after some of the other candidates, which might have made the debate a little bit more interesting. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. and we can talk about the format. <laughs> Let me play this French clip, though, and then I'll get uh, you guys to weigh in on Because that's what this was also. It was also a test of who is actually bilingual because I, I think the party agrees that you need to be able to function in French. Here's a, mm -hmm. here's a clip of that. Prosperité, unidentité canadienne. Parti conservateur doit gagner en 2019. Je suis 100% conservateur au niveau fiscal, au niveau social. First of all, I'd like to say that I speak French the way Mr. Chrétien speaks English or the way he spoke English when he began as a member of parliament. Last one had translation, so you obviously sounded better. <laughs> Did anyone's French... Uh, impress you or disappoint you because th that is I think an important part of, of you know what they're trying to show people if they're trying to be a leader for the country Rachel well I'm an anglophone so I, well, okay I, judge away I, uh, judge look, away <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I unsurprisingly I thought most of them made a really good effort mm -hmm. um, I, I thought some performances were stronger than others obviously mm -hmm. but they all have clearly made an effort they're clearly all working at it um, again I'd identify Lisa Ray as someone who I thought was better than I expected she would be who's clearly been putting a lot of work into this um, but look there were others uh, yeah, frankly who functioned um, who functioned quite well and who did better than I than I thought they were were there some disappointments uh, uh, sure but I think probably Eric has better position to to talk about who was really uh, off the mark okay I, I, I'm gonna take a quick break and can I do that yes I'm gonna take a quick break um, and when we come back we'll pick up on the French issue we're gonna check in with Catherine Cullen who was Standing in the back, listening intently in Moncton. We'll do all that after this short Wednesday there.
The second conservative leadership uh, debate just wrapped up, the first bilingual one, giving the 14 candidates a chance to show off their mastery, or lack thereof, of Canada's uh, langu official languages. We're discussing some of those issues with our special power panel, but let's dip uh, back into Moncton, where the CBC's Catherine Cullen was watching the debate in person, and probably has a good sense of what was happening in the room. I noticed at one point you tweeted, Catherine, that people were perhaps their interest was fading even in the room. So uh, go there or wherever you want in terms of how people were responding to things. Rosie, I want to actually tell you about a woman I, I just spoke to who just walked by me and I said, hey, you know, what did you think of that? And she said, listen, I am from Nova Scotia. My children work in Alberta. I liked a lot of what I heard tonight. I really do think that jobs are the primary issue. I'm, I'm concerned that my kids have to go to another province to look for work. But tonight, while she enjoyed it, did not help her make up her mind. So she still has some thinking to do. And certainly we did hear it over the course of the debate tonight. There are a lot of areas of agreement. Uh, I really gave up tweeting the word jobs. I hope no one was playing a drinking game at home. I think they would have alcohol poisoning. <laughs> they agree on jobs. They agree on the fact that they like a lot of Stephen Harper's record. Uh, they agree on cutting taxes. The question is precisely how much. Um, there were a lot of areas of agreement. Certainly there is some division as well. It was interesting at the beginning of the debate, a woman who was sitting in front of me turned around and she said, oh, are you a journalist? She said, make Kelly Leach look bad, which is obviously not my job. But you could hear at the end, some people in this room really do support Kelly Leach's policy. She got quite a lot of applause uh, when she talked about standing up to the media, standing up to elites, mm -hmm. uh, talking about Canadian values. At the same time, she did get attacked by quite a few of uh, her colleagues up on stage and some people in the room like that. I had a conservative say to me the other day, with 14 candidates, there really is somebody for everybody uh, that may very well be the case <laughs> the question is who's going to wind up with the most support obviously I don't know how far tonight went on helping people make up their minds okay thank, thank you Catherine I appreciate it. it is important to get the view from the room that the conservatives there who are going to make this decision the CBC's Catherine Cullen she's in Moncton New Brunswick tonight let's go back now to the panel Let, let's go back to the issue of French uh, well I'm going to hold you <laughs> and then uh, let the ladies go first uh, anyone anyone really not not good not good enough and that doesn't mean you can't get the job it right. just means you, you better go back to the books and I think that's an important point is that you know they're still a few years away from exactly. a general election exactly. so you know in <laughs> fairness to all the candidates particularly a lot of the candidates who are from Ontario uh, and from Western Canada uh, it, it's important for them to to learn French um, to be you know be competitive in French against, you know, Justin Trudeau in the next election. Um, but I don't know if, if that should be a make or break point for them today. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I was certainly impressed. Uh, I thought Lisa Ray did an excellent job. Um, I thought that... Really? Uh, in French? I, 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 think I, I, I beg to differ. Well, I, I, mm -hmm. I, and that's, I mean, I, that's fair. I guess I just, yeah. I, I did have lowered expectations, so mm -hmm. I was pleasantly surprised. Um, I found Brad Trost and Kelly Leach to be extremely um, confusing. I could not understand a word that they were saying. I found it to be distracting. And I did find that, you know, whether or not we were going to hear from them in English or French, I thought that should have been clarified before because it confused them. A lot of them were fumbling yeah, they with didn't their know papers. Yeah. Um, it bit into their time a little bit. Yeah. So I, th I found in general for me uh, the entire kind of format of the debate to be um, very oh, uh, yes. confusing yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. I don't think for it sure. helped one candidate tonight at all. Okay. Yeah, so uh, disclosure, I also am an Anglophone and I also need to work on my French. <laughs> uh, so not really... Disclosure uh, allowed. Yeah, okay. <laughs> not really allowed. allowed to complain about other people's French when your French also wouldn't stand up. That's what I was surprised, because I'll put a surprise out there, that I thought that actually Andrew Shear's French was better. I mean, we, I. we discussed this throughout mm -hmm. the debate, but also, you know, I've watched him in question period, I've seen him do speeches, and I was a bit surprised that it was a bit rough. So that, that's what I would say. That said, the whole evening tonight was like a bad speed dating event. Right? Like, that's yeah. what it was. Have you ever been to those speed dating events where they're all sitting up lying? Thankfully, and just I have switch, not. You switch one. And, 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 and it's like, but you actually want to have coffee with none of these people. None of them. Right? Well, or maybe you do, but you need to talk to them a little longer. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, That's exactly what it was. It oh, dear. Was. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Eric, bad speed dating. You, you do speak French? I, I do, yes, okay, as, go, as a hobby. Yeah. Okay, as a hobby. Um, uh, but, yeah, no, in terms of the French, I mean, there's two different kinds of French. It's French that you can do off the cuff. There's French that you can read because mm -hmm. it's easy enough to learn how to pronounce words. Sure. Uh, and I'd say that that was where I'd, I'd take points off for Lisa Raitt, who did not 
really speak French off the cuff. No. Uh, her pronunciation was certainly better than uh, Deepak Obrai or Kelly Leach, which were both quite rough. Um, a lot of the candidates were maybe Stephen Harper 2004, 2006 mm -hmm. level of French, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. was good enough. You think Jack Layton, he won 43% yep. of the vote in 2011. His French was rough, but mm -hmm. he, he spoke it with gusto and really mm -hmm. it's the effort that is <laughs> often appreciated. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, but in terms of, of uh, some of these candidates like O'Toole, Ray Shear, if they are supposed to be uh, front runners, yes. um, maybe they might want to get a little bit better. Yeah, I will. I will weigh in as someone that also speaks French fluently. I'm, I will, and I will accept a test to justify this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought um, Chris Alexander was the best Anglophone speaking mm. yes. French. I yeah. thought you could tell yes. that he had his mm -hmm. diplomatic training. Yes. He didn't make mistakes. Um, you know, not that that necessarily that that will be excused. I think mm -hmm. grammatical errors, but you can some of them were quite glaring. And so. uh, Rick Peterson's was very good. Yeah, it which, was decent. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. as yeah. he's also presenting himself as a business candidate. Kevin O'Leary, if he gets in the race, does not speak French. He says he speaks the language of mm -hmm. jobs. Uh, he might get a, a bit of a, a competitor there with uh, another businessman on the stage mm -hmm. who does speak French. Yeah. The next debate in Quebec City is all in French. Yeah, and then I, I don't know how some of those people, like, I, I mean, Kelly Leach speaks French, but mm -hmm. it is very hard to understand, to understand yes. uh, because of her, her accent. She has a hard time overcoming that. I, I, I really don't know how helpful the Quebec City debate is going to be to any of them. Uh, I just, no, I, I mean, seeing tonight, you have the ability to answer in either French or English and to receive questions in either language. And, and for them to go into the next debate, I mean, we're talking, what, less than six weeks away, mm -hmm. actually less than a month away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're talking an entire debate in, in French. And that's oh, yeah, there are extremely some people that won't challenging. Be able to do that. No, mm -hmm. and, I, and I hope that perhaps some of them will be able to make up some decisions and maybe we'll see, you know, the candidates go from 14 to, uh, you know, a more manageable number, 10. Yeah. Eight, maybe, maybe yeah. but it would yeah. be a lot more constructive, I think, yeah. beneficial mm -hmm. for members. But not with this format, right? This mm -hmm. format really needs to change in oh, order yeah. to allow Format's for terrible. real debate and real differentiation right. and real kind of interaction mm -hmm. on issues of substance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This this format now just allows every candidate to speak for kind of 30 or 40 seconds, mm -hmm. motherhood statements, yeah. no real presentation of what the candidate stands for right. or, and no why, interaction. or why anyone should vote no. for them over somebody else. I, I, just because some people on Twitter are asking, for you to disclose if you were actually helping anybody on that stage? So I have helped a number of candidates informally. I'm helping Lisa Raitt uh, informally as well. No okay. formal role in any campaign. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. yep. just, to, just to be transparent about things. Andrew Shear was tweeting that he would like you to do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't actually him because he's probably I, I, busy. I, 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 have I, a I think it's Andrew Shear's team. Yeah, I, I would say. <laughs> That's the way this is going to start. Yes, yeah. go ahead. I just say one thing about the Quebec debate. Now, I've scanned through the rules. Eric, you may know them, and Rosie certainly knows them more fully than I do, but there's probably no expectation that they have to participate in these debates, right? right. And, no, and actually, that's true. as a manager, I might actually question what's a better use of my time. Right. Um, would it better right. be better to have my you know candidate out in the field doing mm -hmm. uh, earned media events or elsewhere, right, raising money mm -hmm. than actually showing up in a debate that might not get the coverage you want, and certainly they won't perform well. Yeah, it probably won't get the coverage you right. want. That's exactly. a really good point. You'd yeah. probably yeah. be more better off actually doing a rally yeah, or going to you know do some door knocking. I mean, ultimately. It, if you're not able to engage with your fellow candidates on stage, uh, you know, that element, I think, was unfortunate. There was a few back and forths. Um, that was not. To uh... your point earlier, though, Rosie, I mean, uh, about... Are, you know, they, they aren't attacking Harper. Um, you know, they aren't kind of distancing themselves. Not that they have themselves. to. Not that they no, have and to. I, but I, I think, you know, for to Rachel's point earlier, it's you are really um, running for the party. And, and, you know, Mr. Harper did not leave as an unpopular leader. No. Um, he did not win the last election, but he did not leave as an unpopular leader. No. No. Uh, but I do think it's probably wise for them to start kind of biting back at each other a little bit more and trying to separate themselves. They, they did it a little bit, yeah. um, you know, pushing back on trust and, and leech on certain policies, but they, sh they should try to do that a bit more moving okay, forward. Okay, you're, you're excellent at segues, so let me segue to that <laughs> clip of I'm gonna, the Bernier-Leach clip. So there was one moment, as we said, there was only one chance to rebut. Mm -hmm. uh, few people really used it effectively. Bernier did, mm -hmm. uh, and he went after Kelly Leach, um, sort of comparing her to Trump. Take a listen to this. She always said that uh, in the campaign that we must uh, look at our immigration system in Canada. And as you know, we're not like in the U.S. We don't have the same problem in the U.S. with illegal immigrants. I don't know why, why Mr. Leach is uh, playing a kind of a karaoke version of Donald Trump in Canada. It is not the same thing. We, uh, I think we are opening to immigration and we don't need this karaoke version of Donald Trump. 
So obviously that was a line he had at the ready. In fact, he tweeted it later. But it was a pretty effective line. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it. I don't know if her support and his support would be the same anyway. But he's obviously feeling that she is a is is a real horse in this race, and he needs to go after her a little bit. What do you? Well, it was interesting because uh, Bernier went after Kelly Leach. Uh, Michael Chong did, yeah. and uh, also a Deepak Obrai sort of mentioned yes. it as well. Yes. Uh, so they the candidates do see her as someone that they want to make sure that they're differentiating themselves from. Uh, Leach for the rebuttal she used just at the end, that was probably good use for her because it was the last thing people would have heard. Mm -hmm. But up to that point in the debate, she was not really all that present and she was mostly talking about capping government spending. Yes, so yeah. it wasn't the kind of stuff that had uh, captured some attention in the past. Uh, so in the end, she might have used that better than Bernier did, who did it earlier on. What do you think? Yeah, well, uh, good for him for for trying to sort of differentiate himself from Kelly on this yes. issue. Yeah. I think that's exactly what candidates need to do, mm -hmm. and I think he did it well. Um, and Kelly was very strategic about how she did the mm -hmm. same thing at the end. Um, but that's that's what I think members will need to see is candidates saying, I disagree with the other candidates mm -hmm. on this issue, mm -hmm. and this is why it's important to me, this is why it's important to you, this is why you yeah. should care about the issue. The, the, the problem is it's that the only differentiate we, differentiation we really see is that issue, that she I has agree. made an issue that wasn't an issue before, mm -hmm. right? Whether I it's agree. Uh, like as as Catherine said, everyone wants more jobs. Everyone, mm -hmm. I know, it's hard. I, yes. So it's there's hard. this very gentle approach to dealing with other candidates. There's this kind of consensus view on all mm -hmm. of these economic issues, and there's there's really no candidate saying I am different from the other candidates, and this is why you should support mm -hmm. me. Like this is why I am the person to replace Justin yeah. Trudeau in yeah. 2019. Yeah. And I think that's going to be increasingly important uh, for candidates to really outline that clearly. Mm -hmm. Someone on Twitter says you actually get fined if you don't show up for all debates, but I don't know if that's that's true. I will check that and get yeah, back to people. Because okay. mm -hmm. then that, then it's your idea issue. would be not as good. Mm -hmm. But uh, go ahead on, on, on the Bernier <laughs> thing. Well, I would just say a couple things that I, I think that, you know, for Kelly particularly, she also took on Bernier. Mm -hmm. She um, criticized him around the privatization thing. And Healthcare, I guess yeah. the thing in, in politics, the worst thing in politics is being ignored. Like, you want them talking about you, even if it's in a bad way. Totally. Like, you know, yep. I, I mean, that, you know, that may make me very cynical, but it, it's true. And um, and by her taking on Bernier, as, as many took on Kelly, it signifies that he also is the guy to take down, right? So she attacked him on his uh, notion of um, privatizing everything and totally... Uh, withdrawing mm -hmm. in terms of a role of government. And I think that, you know, his, his fundraising lead, uh, his support from people like Tony Clement has really put him um, in the front front role. Yeah, he, Bernier has a, had a lot of very strong policies um, throughout this campaign, and I think he's been consistent at putting out ideas about how exactly he wants to shape not only the party but the country. That's been effective, uh, and certainly probably in a, a more tangible way than Kelly Leach. You know, she's sitting here talking about mace and... Pepper spray and well, all that, was other things. Uh, was that was pepper her third spray, big idea. That was her third big idea. If you want to get elected uh, in the next, uh, you know, in the next election, running on that platform, I mean, the liberals would be thrilled with it. So please, I oh I yeah, no, I can do yeah, that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, it's it's not helpful to the debate though. But she does seem to be putting out some very divisive ideas, um, and I think it's a desperate media grab. I think she's trying to grab headlines and kind of create a front runner, uh, you know, persona for herself, which well, is I don't exactly know how, what uh, Donald yeah, Trump did in the last election. I don't know how desperate it is because it's working. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I, I, I would be desperate if she was in the, the last in the pack, but it, it does seem to be For sure. there I, are I, people that support it, right? So uh, let, yes. yeah, let me do one last clip, can I, of uh, Deepak O'Brien, the shorter one. Uh, Deepak O'Brien, I guess, on Bernier. Let, let's uh, let's play that, because Deepak O'Brien, the only visible minority on the stage, uh, not great, not great French, uh, I think probably not likely to win, but who knows, things could turn. Anyway, here's a little taste of um, Deepak O'Brien. Un economic fort egal. A strong economy Desemploi. equals jobs. Deepak O'Brien egal. Deepak O'Brien equals Merci. jobs. Monsieur Bernier. Merci. You're right, Deepak. <laughs> <laughs> we need more. We need more Deepak. <laughs> to watch this debate for an hour and a half, and I hope you all did at home too, but he was a, a lovely moment of it levity was. when we needed yeah. it. And he, he opened the Saskatoon debate by saying he was a nobody candidate because That's nobody was no, paying attention I... to him. So he's been, he's been the comic relief, but I'm sure he would like to be treated more than the comic relief, but he's certainly enlivened the debate so far. Yeah. But but him and the props, I mean... Oh yeah, we didn't even yeah. show the props. No, we didn't need to talk about the props, props I think. Yeah. Is, he, uh, he, is he a real candidate, or is some of this just about 
position. Well, he's been going after Bernier, and that's kind of the indication that he wants to go after that Quebec vote. But I thought it was very funny, and a lot of people mentioned this on Twitter. But uh, the inanimate carbon rod holding up a oh, rod. Blaney, yeah, 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 you want to be more interesting than the rod, and everybody knows that that's a. <laughs> I don't think I have don't time to lose. play that clip. Unfortunately, <laughs> do I? All right, play it. Go ahead. Nuclear is a safe and reliable energy. That's how we're going to reduce bill for for small and medium businesses. That's also how we are going to reinvest in our Canadian knowledge. Thank you, Mr. I am proud to be an engineer. Thank you. <laughs> but when he pulled that out, everyone, you know, all of we all went. Like, <gasps> <gasps> Props. Where's the security? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not sure what the point was there, but yeah, he was clearly going after Bernier because yeah. that's the same mm -hmm. sort of um, area. Okay, so next one is on the 17th. You think they'll all be there? No, nope. of January. No. No. no, no, I don't. I think you'll see about a 20, 25% reduction by then. Like we're twenty five percent reduction. Yeah, saying, I think yeah, so. Yeah. I think so. Okay. To say nothing, I mean twenty five percent is still like what three or four out of fifteen. <laughs> guys, like I'm not. It's just not to, say, that unrealistic. <laughs> to say nothing of uh, if Kevin O'Leary gets in the race, mm -hmm. which could still happen. And that fifty thousand dollar compliance deposit is required by the end of the year. Good. That. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, so maybe twenty five percent. I see seven in Quebec. There's my number. All right. Whoa. Lay it down. She's doubling down on it. Doubling down on it. Thank you all. That was. I was glad you were here to keep me company during all of that. Uh, Eric Grenier, Rachel Curran, Kathleen Monk, and Lindsay Doyle. I'm Rosemary Barton. That ends our special coverage of the second conservative leadership debate. Remember, 14 candidates. We'll see how many we uh, have by the time we get to uh, the 17th of January in the new year. Remember to join us on Power and Politics tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern on CBC News Network. Thanks for watching. The Nationals coming up next here on this, on this channel. I'm going to just go to sleep right under this desk. I'll see you back here in a few.